Guys, welcome back to the Web Monkey Show. My name is Alex. It's a pleasure to have you here today. And in this video, we're going to have ourselves a mega super duper elemental tutorial where I'm going to show you how to build this fully functional website called Passport Travel by making use of both the free version of Elementor as well as the paid version of Elementor. So if you're someone who's looking to learn how to use Elementor and maybe you're not interested in using the paid version of Elementor, I'm going to show you how you can build this entire website with the free version, first of all. And then if you'd like to buy the paid version of Elementor, I'll show you all the wonderful uh, things you can do with the paid version because the paid version obviously is a lot uh, stronger than the free version. But let me give you a quick tour of what we're going to build together in today's video. So the website is, is called Passport Travel. It's basically a fictional travel agency that helps uh, tourists like, you know, plan their dream vacation. They provide tips and travel itineraries and guides and so on. So this is basically going to be the home page right here. We're going to have the logo on the left, the main menu on the right. But then we also have this very nice uh, background banner. And I don't know about you, but me personally, I love it when the header that has the logo and the menu kind of blends in with the background. So we're going to have this static image right there with the banner where travel meets adventure. But I'm also going to show you an alternative to the homepage banner and that would be a video. So if you're interested in using videos as your background instead, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that uh, in today's tutorial. Now moving further down the homepage, we're going to have this section where we have you know, an image on the left and on the right, and then we'll have some text. We'll have like a services or features section next. We'll also have our gallery where we're going to display images from all over the world. I'll show you how you can add that one. There will be a small section for the blog highlighting the two latest blog posts. There will be a deals and packages section with a button that might link to maybe booking.com or travel.com. And then of course, reviews from past customers and then we're also going to have this wonderful footer at the back. Now, in addition to the home page, we're going to build two other pages. We're going to have the blog page, which is your traditional blog page, having uh, blog posts from different kinds of categories. So we're going to have categories from Europe, from Asia, from South America. And then also we'll have the contact page where I'll show you how to build a contact form uh, using Elementor. So first of all, with the free version of Elementor, because we're not using the paid version, we're going to have to work with three additional plugins to compensate. Those three additional plugins will be essential add-ons for Elementor. We're going to use the Elementor header and footer builder to build our header and footer, and then also the WP Forms plugin to add our contact form. But once we begin working with the paid version of Elementor, we're no longer going to need any one of these uh, plugins to uh, build the site. Now with the paid version of Elementor, I'm actually going to show you how you can build a post template specifically for your posts. Now take a look at this post you're looking at right now. It's called Fashion in Istanbul. I'm going to show you how you can build a template to display your posts in this manner where you will have the title, you will have the featured image, you will have the date the post was published, the number of comments, you will have the entire content area, and then you will also have the post navigation for the previous post, the next post, and then a comments section. But also notice at the top right here, you have this bar indicating the progress by indicating how much of the content has been read and how much needs to be read before the article has finished. So if you're going to work with the paid version of Elementor, I've got you covered. I'm going to show you lots of tricks that you can use with the paid version of Elementor. Now, a few more things to mention. We're going to be working with a lot of images and also a video in this course. Now, if you'd like to make use of the images, I will provide them for you via a Dropbox link. You will find it down in the description box below. I'm going to include the images as well as the video and also an XML file containing all the posts and pages I've created. So if you'd like to use my posts, my categories, my pages, I will include the XML file for you as well. Simply uh, import the XML file onto your site. Now, if you are in fact going to use my images for uh, commercial purposes, please, these images, they're actually mine. I took these images or when I, when I traveled around the world, uh, all of them except this one right here, which is the, I got this one from a, from a free website. So my Instagram account is actually uh, Travels of Xander. I am trying to grow my Instagram account. So if you're somebody who enjoys traveling or have an interest in seeing pictures from all over the world, 
please do consider following me on Instagram. I would really appreciate it. And if you're going to use any of my images on your own personal websites, please do give a shout out to my Instagram account. I would really appreciate it. And of course, if you're going to work with the paid version of Elementor, I am an affiliate for Elementor, which means that if you buy Elementor's uh, paid version using my own link, I will get a small commission. I'll have my affiliate link in the box below. So please, if you're going to buy Elementor Pro, please do make use of my affiliate link and try to support me and support what I'm doing here on this channel. Also, if this is your first time here or you've been here before and you haven't yet subscribed, but you like content like this, please do subscribe. Hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So, last thing to mention before we jump into the tutorial, I'm also going to assume that you're brand new to the world of web development and building websites. So, if you're such, you're going to need, you're going to need access to web hosting as well as a domain name. In the very next section, I'm going to introduce you to web hosting, how to buy yourself a web domain, how to buy web hosting, how to install WordPress. So you can watch those, but if you're someone who already has all of this, you know about WordPress, you know about WordPress hosting, you have all of that, you just want to learn about Elementor, I will have the timestamps in the box below so you can simply use that to skip around and uh, start from wherever you want to start from. So that's it. Thank you so much and I sincerely hope and believe that you will enjoy today's mega tutorial. I'm very, very excited. I hope you're excited as well. Let's get started. I just want to mention something very, very quick before we get started. And that is, uh, you may notice throughout this course that some of the videos where I show myself the angle and lighting might be a little bit different. Uh, that's because I initially recorded using my camera right here. You can see this is my digital camera. Uh, unfortunately, the card, the memory card just broke for some reason. I don't know how I managed to do that. But a lot of the other videos, including this one you're watching, I've had to use my mobile phone. So I do apologize if you notice a difference in the angle, the lightning. Just know that it's because I had to use two different uh, devices to record myself. But hopefully that won't affect the viewing experience. Just thought I should mention that. Let's continue with the course. All right. So in this very special section, we're talking about web hosting domains and working with WordPress locally on your computer. Now, if you're already familiar with these topics, and you don't need web hosting, you already know how to install WordPress locally on your computer, by all means, you can skip this entire section, move on to the next section, don't waste your time here. However, if you're brand new to web development, web hosting, domain names, then this section is going to be for you. In order to take this course, you need to be able to work with WordPress. Now, this could mean either working locally on your computer or you actually go the live route where you buy yourself a domain name, you get yourself some web hosting, and then you work with WordPress live on the internet. Now, there's pros and cons to both sides. The major pros with working locally on your computer is that, well, it's completely free. You don't have to pay any amount of money. And then second, you don't need internet access, so you can work on your website anytime. It doesn't matter where you are. The major downsides, though, is that you're not going to get the experience of working with an actual web host. So you're not going to know exactly how they protect your website from hackers and malware. Uh, you may not be able to do certain things like maybe install SSL certificates and so much, but there are basically things that you need to be uh, live on the internet before you can actually do them. So your working experience with working with WordPress locally on your computer will be uh, limited. Now, on the flip side, the major pros of working live on the internet is that, well, you're going to get all the experience. Your website is going to be live on the internet. Plus, if you want somebody else, like maybe, say, for example, me, to take a look at your website, it's going to be very, very easy. You just have to share the link to your, to your domain, and I'll take a look, and it's going to be as easy as that. The major downside, though, is that it costs money to buy yourself a domain name and also get yourself uh, some web hosting. But with that being said, uh, if you want my own personal recommendation, I would always recommend the live route. Get yourself some hosting, get yourself a domain name. I just personally prefer that. But regardless, if you want to go the local route or you want to go the live route, I have spared no effort in introducing you to as many options as possible. Let me first of all talk about the live route. Now, when it comes to web host, because you need a hosting company to host your website live on the internet, 
I have two main options for you, SiteGround and then Cloudways. These are two web hosting companies that I actually personally host with. Uh, I've been with SiteGround since 2012. I joined Cloudways uh, 2020. Now, the major difference between both of them is that SiteGround offers you something known as shared hosting, and then they also offer you, offer you cloud hosting. Now, cloud hosting is superior to shared hosting because with shared hosting, your website is basically sharing resources with other websites uh, across the world. But with cloud hosting, it's just going to be your own website having a particular amount of resources specifically used by your website. Your website isn't going to share those resources with other websites. So basically, cloud hosting is more superior. With that being said, though, SiteGun offers you both shared hosting and cloud hosting. Cloudways offers you only cloud hosting. They don't offer you shared hosting. So uh, as a result, with SiteGround, you can get uh, slightly cheaper alternatives. Like if you go to web hosting, for example, on SiteGround, uh, these are the prices. Okay, so they, it starts from $7 per month to all the way to $15 per month, depending on which plan you go with. And then with Cloudways, it's going to be a bit more expensive, like I said, because they only offer cloud hosting. But honestly, in terms of cloud hosting itself, uh, they're among the cheapest that you can find on the internet. Their plans start from $10 per month all the way to $80 per month, depending on the amount of resources that you want to buy uh, for your website. Now, in the very next video, I'll walk you through briefly how you can buy yourself uh, domain names and then web hosting with both Cloudways and SiteGround. But let me also mention that I have written extensive articles on both SiteGround and Cloudways. I have also made videos comparing both SiteGround and Cloudways. Uh, here is one right here, SiteGround versus Cloudways hosting, which is better. You can check out my YouTube channel, The Web Monkey. I'll recommend that you subscribe as well. So I've made videos comparing SiteGround and uh, Cloudways. I have also uh, made extensive tutorials on how to work in the back end of both SiteGround and uh, Cloudways. This is the one for SiteGround. So I show you how you can take advantage of the features they offer you like speed, security, uh, email services, and so on. Everything is covered in the video. I've also done the same for Cloudways as well. I've made a full tutorial walking you through the entire back end of Cloudways. So regardless of which one of the two you choose, I have you covered. I have all the necessary uh, information for you. I have also written articles on my blog, webmonkeyonline.com. You can check it out where I, com where I compare both of them and I also write my honest reviews about both uh, web hosting companies. In short, I can stick my reputation on both Cloudways and SiteGround because I work with them. And the good news here is that if you decide to go with Cloudways, if you want to buy yourself some cloud hosting, you want to go with, with Cloudways, They've, I've actually partnered with them to provide you with a very special discount where you can get 25% off for the first three months. You simply use the coupon code CloudMonk25, but you also have to use my link, which I'll provide in the resources attached to this video. If you can't find the link, do let me know and I'll send you uh, another one. But you have to use the link and then use the coupon code CloudMonk25 to get 25% off for the first three months. Now, that's for the live route. If you want to go local, you want to work with WordPress locally on your computer, I've also made extensive tutorials. You can check out my YouTube video titled uh, How to Install WordPress Locally with XAMPP. XAMPP is one way how you can work with WordPress locally on your computer. But I've also made another video for uh, local uh, by Flywheel. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Local by Flywheel, yes, it's another way how you can work with WordPress locally on your computer. You will find the video, I think the the next one is going to be the second one after the upcoming video, basically. So I've, I'm, I'm going to show you how you can install WordPress locally on your computer with Flywheel. And personally, between uh, XAMPP and Flywheel, I'll recommend Flywheel. Flywheel is a bit better because with Flywheel, you can actually generate a live link for your website installed locally on your computer. So if you, if you need somebody to take a look at your website, you can do so uh, with Flywheel. So I'll recommend you use Flywheel over XAMPP. So again, you can check out the video I'll have. It's going to be further down. I'll walk you through how you can work with Flywheel, how you can install WordPress locally on your computer. So uh, with that being said, that's basically the introduction to web hosting and uh, domain names. In the very next video, I'm going to show you how you can actually purchase web hosting with SiteGround and also with Cloudways and also how you can buy a domain name from uh, 
a site called Namecheap. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next class. All righty, so like I said in the previous video, let me show you how you can buy yourself web hosting and domain names with both uh, Cloudways and SiteGround. Let's start off with SiteGround, and you can go to SiteGround.com, and then right here under hosting, you will see web hosting, WordPress hosting, WooCommerce hosting. It doesn't matter, they're all the exact same thing. I'm gonna go with WordPress hosting, and then right here, they have three main packages, Startup, Grow Big, and then uh, Go Geek. Now, if you want my own personal recommendation, you want to go with Grow Big because with Grow Big, you can actually install as many websites as you want on that single uh, hosting account. With Startup, you're limited to just one single website. So keep that in mind. Now, with Go Geek and Grow Big, obviously, you see the differences. With Go Geek, you have access to more resources, more speed, more disk space, and so on. So it all depends on how much you can afford. Now, I'm going to go right here, click on Get Plan. And then if you have a domain name that you've already bought from another website, you simply go with, I already have a domain and then you proceed from there. But let's just say, for example, you don't have a domain name and you want to get yourself a domain name. Well, you come in here right now and you type it out. So let me just type in something ridiculous because I know no one in the world has this domain name right now. So I'm going to go ahead now, click on proceed. So SiteGround will check to see if it's available. And of course it's available because no one in their right minds would buy <laughs> such a domain name. So you simply fill out the information right here, put out your email, your information. Now, very, very, very important. Let me show you something right here where you have the data center. Automatically, it will default to your physical location, but you want to make sure that it's actually accurate. Now, it's set mine to Asia because I am actually in Asia right now. But depending on where you live, you have several options. You want to choose the data center that, that is closest to your physical location. So, for example, if you're in India, uh, the closest would be uh, Singapore, Asia. That's the closest uh, to India. And, uh, and so on. the reason why is because uh, the closer you are to the data center, the more the faster you'll be able to access your website. So simply choose the correct data center. And then, of course, you can go with 24 months, 36 months and so on. Right here, they do offer additional features like domain privacy and also their site ground site scanner. In all honesty, you don't need them. OK, just just ignore those two and just buy your domain name and the web hosting and then you receive an email and then you can proceed from there. Of course, don't forget to check out my YouTube tutorial on how to access and use all the features that SiteGround offers you in their back end. Now, with Cloudways, one thing I need to mention is that with Cloudways, uh, you cannot buy yourself a domain name. They only provide you with cloud hosting. Uh, speaking of cloud hosting, I nearly forgot, uh, with SiteGround, they do also offer you cloud hosting, don't get me wrong, it's just that their own cloud hosting is a bit more expensive than that of Cloudways. So if you're looking for a cheaper alternative, Cloudways is your answer. And yes, they're actually quite good with their cloud hosting as well. So with Cloudways, you're going to go over to pricing and you will see the different options that they have. Cloudways themselves don't actually offer you the cloud uh, service. They partner with other companies. So right here you have DigitalOcean, Linode, Volter, AWS, which is Amazon, and then Google. And of course, Amazon and Google are the most expensive, as you can see. I mean, with Google, you can go as high as $225 per month, which is insane. Uh, DigitalOcean is by far the most popular. It's also what I use. So if you're going to go with cloud hosting, I would recommend uh, DigitalOcean. And then right here, you choose whichever one uh, you can afford. I would recommend at the very least, go with the $22 per month at the very least. And then you can click on Start Free. They'll offer you uh, three days free trial. But don't forget that right here where you have to fill out your name and all that, uh, you have the link for got a promo code. You want to click in there and then add your uh, promo code cloudmonk25 to get 25% off for the first three months. Don't forget to use my link in order to take advantage of that promotion. And then I believe with Cloudways, you will have to verify your identity. So you may need to take a picture of your ID card, whether it's your license, your driver's license, or your passport, things like that. You send it to them, and then within an hour or so, they will confirm your identity, and then you'll get access uh, to the host. And of course, like I said, don't forget to check out the YouTube tutorial where I walk you through how to use uh, the Cloudways backend. Now, I know I said earlier that with Cloudways, you cannot buy 
a domain name. They only offer you cloud hosting. So what's the alternative? You could buy your domain name from SiteGround, but a cheaper alternative would be uh, Namecheap.com. Uh, you can buy domain names for you know really, really inexpensive amounts in here. So as an example, in here, again, I'm going to type in something ridiculous, hdfasdfa.com. <laughs> Let's go ahead now, search for that one. So of course, Namecheap will check and verify that it does it, it's available. So let's wait. So let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Okay. So you can see right now it is afford. It is available, and it's only uh, eight dollars per year. So I'm gonna go ahead now, add that onto the cart, and then uh, proceed to checkout. I buy the domain name. I get my email, and I am in. Now the question you will have here, obviously, is you've bought yourself a domain name from Namecheap. You've gotten yourself cloud hosting from Cloudways. How do you connect both of them, right? Well. It's very, very easy. In the YouTube tutorial, I show you how to do so, but Cloudways also have an actual uh, document right here explaining to you the entire process. You have to create something known as an A record on your Namecheap account. They show you all the steps in here. It's right there. It's very, very, very easy. I guarantee you it's not gonna take more than five minutes. You simply do whatever, you do what they tell you to do right here, and then uh, the rest is history, as they say, you will easily, propagate your domain name from Namecheap over to Cloudways. Of course, if you run into any issues, if you run into any difficulty, you can contact Cloudways. Their support is also very, very good. And I guarantee you that they will be able to help you out. So if you have any more questions about SiteGround, or Cloudways or Namecheap, of course, you do let me know. I'll do my best to answer your questions as soon as possible. So hopefully I've been able to give you enough guidance on how to get started with web hosting, domain names, SiteGround, Cloudways and so on. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, I will see you in the next class. I'm making this video to quickly show you how you can install WordPress on your website on both SiteGround and Cloudways. Now, of course, I covered both in my YouTube tutorials, but I think this will be a lot faster for you. Uh, you can watch the YouTube tutorials for more information like, you know, backups, security, SSL certificates and so on. But let me show you how you can quickly get your website up and running on these two platforms. Now, if you're with SiteGround, once you've logged in, you will see websites up here on your main menu. You click in there. And then right here, you just click on new website up here. You click in there, choose your hosting plan. Let's continue. Now, right here, you have three options. You can go with the new domain where you'll have to buy a new domain name again and then proceed. Or you can go with your existing domain. You click on select and then choose your domain name that you bought from SiteGround. Or you can go with temporary domain where SiteGround will create a temporary domain for you. It's free. You can see right now it's created this one for me. I'm going to click on continue. And by the way, the process from this point on is the same for either the temporary domain or the existing domain options. Right here, you're going to click on start a new website. You click on select right here to install an application. And right here, you can go with WordPress or if you're taking a WooCommerce course, you can go with our WordPress plus WooCommerce as well. But I would recommend you just go with WordPress right here. You click on select and then you just set up your login details. You enter your email address right here your password, click on continue. And oops, I should have entered an actual uh, email address in here. My apologies. Okay, let me just quickly fill that out. Okay, click on continue. And you don't need to add the site scanner. You don't need that one. Just click on finish. And uh, there you go. So right now, SiteGround will create the site for you. Let's move on to Cloudways and let me show you how you can add your website. From here, from servers, you want to go over to applications on your main menu up here. Okay, so from here, you click on add application, the green button. Okay, and then from here, you're going to choose your server that you have with them. You click on add application. And then from here, what you're going to do is you select the application. You want to go with WordPress version 5.6. It might be a, an updated version depending on when you're watching this video. But currently, it's 5.6, so 5.6. Now you can name your website. So I'm just going to call my own test website, just as an example. Test web site. Uh, project, just leave that as it is. And then click on Add Application. And there you go. So side, uh, I'm sorry, Cloudways right now is installing WordPress on the website. And uh, so you can see right now, it will take approximately two minutes. Uh, SiteGround has already finished. 
So from here right now, you can go to the Access WordPress Admin. You, you click on the button right here, and this will take you straight to the back end. Uh, so you, you might see this warning telling you that, hey, the site is not secure. That's because you've not yet installed uh, an SSL certificate, but it's fine. You can go ahead and proceed to the website. Okay, so you can you can ignore the error warning. And uh, there you go. So with SiteGround specifically, they do have the Startup Wizard. You can just click on Exit to exit the wizard and take you straight to the back end. And there you go. So from, from here right now, you have WordPress installed on your website. You can then proceed with the course. Uh, with Cloudways, let's see. Okay, it's going to take about a minute. Let me just wait for this one to finish. Now, once again, my YouTube tutorials on both SiteGround and Cloudways will cover everything that, everything that you need to know from creating email accounts, uh, installing SSL certificates, taking backups, uh, and so on and so forth. Let me go ahead and close this too. And uh, there you go. So fortunately, Cloudways has finished installing WordPress. So you're going to go back to your applications. And then right here, you should see the name of your website right here. You click on test website right there. Just click on the link. And then from here, you will see now the application URL right here. You will have the button to launch your website. And uh, there you go. So from here right now, you can see uh, Cloudways has installed WordPress on the, this temporary domain. You can now simply from here go ahead and access the backend wp-admin. And uh, there you go. You simply log in, provide your username and your password, and you're good to go. So hopefully, this video has shown you how you can get WordPress installed on your website with both SiteGround and Cloudus. If you have any questions, of course, do let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. All right, let me show you how you can install WordPress locally on your computer using Local by Flywheel. So you can go to localwp.com. And uh, it's free for the most part. So what you want to do is you simply click on the download button up here. And then you can choose your platform, whether you're working with a Mac, Windows, Linux, and so on. I'm working with, with Windows. I'm going to choose Windows. And then I can simply go ahead and provide my first name, uh, last name, work email, and then phone number, and then get it now. So I've already done this before, so I don't need to do so again. Just simply go ahead and provide your first name, all these details, then click on get it now. And then you will get your download link to download local on your computer. All right, so as you can see right now, I have already downloaded the local application. It's about 460 megabytes for the Windows PC. So I'm going to go ahead now and install it by double clicking on the file itself. And uh, it might take a while for you to see this particular window pop up. Just be patient, but it will pop up eventually. So right now you can install Flywheel for anyone or just you on your computer. I'm going to go with uh, only for me. So I'll click on next, click on install. And uh, there you go. It's very, very, very straightforward. Let's just wait for a few more seconds for this to finish. It's a little bit large. It's, it's going to be about 1.5 gig uh, once you've finished installing the application. And it will only get bigger and bigger with the more uh, local websites that you create on your computer. Because keep in mind that you'll be storing all the files, the themes, the plugins, everything that, that make up your websites will be stored locally on your computer. So make sure uh, that you have enough uh, space in your hard drive. Okay, so this is taking a little bit longer than I expected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and okay, it seems to be picking up right now. Okay, okay, so I knew it's usually doesn't usually take that long to install. But for some reason, maybe because it knows I'm recording, it decides to take a bit more time. I don't know, I'm going to go ahead now and simply click on finish and we can run a uh, local as well. And I'm going to show you how you can now uh, begin to create websites using local on your computer. So right now, let me just come down here. You will see the local uh, symbol right here. That's for local down there. So this is basically the main interface. And now we can create a new site by clicking on the green button right here. Let's go ahead and create a new site. And let's just call this one uh, Blogger, just as an example. Okay, this is going to be the name of our website, you do have the advanced options right here where you can choose the local site domain, 
the local site path, and then whether you want to create a site from Blueprint. You don't need any of this out of the command, you just ignore them. Just go ahead, click on continue. And then right here, you have the preferred options or you have custom. This is where you can indicate the kind of database software you want to use and so on. Again, if you click on custom, uh, you can choose your PHP version, your web server, your database. Unless you know what you're doing, I would recommend you simply go with the preferred option. Okay, click on continue. And now you can provide your username. I'm going to provide my username as Alex. And then the password, I'm going to provide a strong password all the same. And then WordPress email, I'll just go ahead and add my official email right here. Webmonkeyonline.com. And of course, you also have advanced options where you know you can indicate if this is a subdirectory or a subdomain. We're not doing any of that, so I'll just click on no. Let's go ahead now and simply add our site. And uh, right now, local is creating the website locally on our computer. It's not going to take that long, so. Uh, let's see. All right, so it's starting up the site services and so you might get, you know, warning signs like this and hey, you know, this program is trying to access your processor or things like that. Just say yes. Okay, make sure you grant permission. If you have a firewall that's also active on your computer, on your Mac or your PC, the firewall might also say, hey, you know, this particular application is trying to access files or make changes. It's safe. Don't worry. Just go ahead and grant access. Uh, to the application. So as you can see right now, it is downloading WordPress. It's now adding WordPress. All right, so I'm going to pause the video right now and simply resume once WordPress has installed. And okay, as you can see right now, <laughs> just as I said, I was going to pause the video. It quickly went, went ahead to finish uh, installing. So there you go. We have WordPress installed successfully on our blogger website. And then right here where you have your overview, uh, you can make certain changes. So right now you have the site domain in here, blogger.local, you have the SSL. I'll recommend you go ahead, click on trust so that your browser will trust your local website to run uh, HTTPS. It may not always work, but in all honesty, it's not going to matter for the most part because you're still working with files locally on your PC. All right. You don't need to change anything in here for web server, PHP version, the one click admin, uh, it's currently disabled, but I'll recommend that you enable it. Let me show you what it does. So right now, right here, if I go to the admin button right here, I want to access the back end of my site. You can see right now I have to provide a username and a password, but let me go back to fly. If I go ahead now and enable this for myself, who is the admin, and I say Alex. If I go ahead now and click on admin, automatically right now you will see that I have now been logged in. So this will depend on whether or not you're the only person who uses your computer. Even if there are other people who use your computer and you trust them, this is perfectly fine. You don't need to provide your username and your password because you're still working with files locally on your computer. So I'll highly recommend you go ahead and activate the one click admin. It's just, it just makes things so much more convenient and easier for you. Okay. Right here, you have your database. Okay. And if you ever need to access the database for your website, you simply click on the open admin. Now. Okay. I've clicked in there and right now you can see I have access to the actual database for my website. So if you ever need to access your database, this is how you would do so with local and then you have utilities as well, which yeah, we don't need to work with these. Uh, you also have uh, tools where you can buy things like uh, live links, instant reload, link checker, things like that. You also have the image optimizer option that would allow you to optimize images uh, with local. But in all honesty, there are plugins that you can also use from WordPress directly that can uh, help you with this. Okay, just a few more things to mention with you. Uh, the connect button right here. This works specifically if you're hosting uh, with WP Engine. You can easily transfer your files to WP Engine. You simply log in with your host and then follow the prompts. It's very, very, very convenient. Unfortunately, it's only uh, WP Engine right now that Flywheel is partnered with. Hopefully, in the nice future, they will partner up with other very 
popular web hosting providers like you know cloud host and i'm um, sorry cloudways and sideground and so on and then right here you have the add-ons again and not, you don't really need to work with any of these and then right here you have the get help button uh and so on down here of course you have the plus button to add a new site if you want to up here is your account you can upgrade to pro or log into the hub if you want to and then of course you have your menu buttons right here where you can add a new site you can import a site as well and you can also check for our uh, updates Okay, let's go back to the blogger site and I want to show you something very, very, very important. If you need to access the files that make up your website, I'm not talking about the database, now, I'm talking about the actual files themselves. Right here underneath the name of your, of your site, you will see this link, this arrow. You simply click in there and this will take you to the folder containing local and all your files for your websites. And then from here, you want to go to the app, open up public. And now right here, you have access to the core files, making up your WordPress website. So if you go to WP content, for example, right here, you will have access to your plugins, your themes folder, and so on. So if you ever need to access the files of your website locally, this is how uh, you would do so. All right. There are a few more things you can choose to stop at the website. If you want to go on a break and, you know, resume later is simply click on stop site right here and then let me show you one other very very cool feature with local right here you can actually enable a live link for your site that will allow people to access it on the internet so right here where you have the live link you can go ahead now click on enable okay so what this does is that it's going to create a live link for your site i'm going to go ahead and click on copy and then I'm going to go back to my browser. Let's come right here and I'm going to paste and go. And right now you can see I can now access my blogger website via the Internet. So if you ever need to access your site via the Internet, you can do so by creating a live link. But of course, keep in mind that you will need uh, Internet access in order to do so. OK, I'm going to go ahead now and stop everything. And if you want to delete your website that you've created, you simply right click right here on the name of your website. And then right here, you will have the delete button. Uh, you can rename the button. You, I'm sorry, you can rename the site as well. You can clone the site. You can start the site. You can open up the folder for your site as well. And so on and so forth. So that's pretty much how to install WordPress locally on your computer using local. Thank you for watching. And of course, I will see you in the next class. All right. So first things first, before we get started, there are a few things I would like you to do first of all. And the first thing here is I want you to install a theme called the hello theme. This is the theme right here. It's actually by Elemental themselves. We're going to be working with this theme. So please go ahead, install and activate the theme. And then what I want you to do is go ahead and create some posts which you're going to be working with. I have already created uh, about nine posts in here. You can see I've got three different categories of Asia, Europe and South America. And each of these categories have three different posts. Now, I'm actually going to provide for you the XML file that will contain all these posts. So you can simply import them onto your website. And then for the images as well, I'll also provide probably a link to Dropbox where you will have access to all uh, these images, which you can use. A lot of these images are actually for my own Instagram account, but you're more than well welcome to use them on your own website. The only thing I ask for is that if you're going to use my images on your website and you're making money from your website, please uh, do uh, mention that you got these pictures uh, from my uh, Instagram account. So please uh, do that. But I'll provide for you all the posts, content via an XML file and also the images that I have used. Now, I've also created uh, a few pages as well. I do have the about page, the articles page, which would be like the blog page, a contact page, a featured page, and of course, the home page. Also, when you're done, come down here to settings, go to reading and then set your home page to the home 
page. So basically choose a static page right here and then set home page to be home. Last but not least, I've also created a menu. So go down here to appearance menus and then create uh, your main menu. You can see I do have my menu name, menu name right here called main menu and I've added home about articles uh, featured and contact. So that's a little assignment for you to do. Again, I'll provide for you the XML file for the posts and pages, as well as a link to Dropbox for the uh, images being used. All right, so now that you've added all the necessary content onto your site, it is now time to install some plugins. And of course, the very first plugin we're going to install uh, will be Elementor. Before I do that, I do have three plugins already active on my site, SiteGround Optimizer and Security because I'm hosting with SiteGround. And then WordPress Importer. If you've imported the XML file that I provided for you in the previous video, you most likely would have used the WordPress Importer plugin. So I did the exact same thing for myself. So that's why I do have the plugin active there. But what we're gonna do right now is we're going to add three different plugins. And the first one, obviously, is going to be Elementor. That's the main plugin that we're going to be working with. It's the one right here. And of course, it's the free version of Elementor. But because it's the free version of Elementor, it's a little bit restricted in terms of features available. In order to compensate for that, we're going to install two more plugins. And the very first one here is right next to Elementor. It's the Essential Add-ons for Elementor by WP Developer. So I'm going to go ahead to install that plugin as well. And then finally, we're going to install the one down here, which is the Elemental Header and Footer Builder by Brainstorm Force. So let's go ahead and install the plugin. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead now to install the plugins. And I'm just going to go ahead and activate them uh, one at a time. Activate header and footer builder and then activate essential add-ons for Elementor. Now, if once you activate the essential add-ons for Elementor, you may see a page. In fact, let me go ahead and click on the link right here. Uh, because this isn't the first time that I have installed the essential add-ons plugin on my page, you're not I'm not seeing the welcome uh, page. So it's very likely that you may have seen a different page where they will say, hey, you know, welcome, uh, choose which elements you want to work with. Just click on next, 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 next. They will also offer you the upgrade to like pay for the paid version of uh, essential add-ons. Just ignore that. Just click on next, 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 and then finish. And then this will basically be uh, the page that you would see. But more on that a bit later. Let's take a look at uh, Elementor first of all, okay? settings what exactly do we have in here the first thing here is going to be the post types if you're working with custom post types you will have the option to check them in here as well but i'm just working with posts and pages so i'm going to keep this two checked now it says disable default colors checking this box will disable elementor's default colors and make Elementor inherit the colors from your theme. Now, if you're using an advanced theme, like let's say Astra or Ocean WP and so on, and you wanna use the colors from your theme, you will uh, uncheck these two boxes right here. But because we're using the Hello theme, which is a very, very lightweight theme, Elementor is going to be doing all the heavy lifting for style, design, and functionality. So. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to check these two boxes. I'm sorry. I'm going to uncheck these two boxes, okay? Because we do, in fact, want to use the default colors uh, provided by uh, Elementor. So I'm going to keep these two uh, boxes unchecked. And then finally, improve Elementor. If you'd like to contribute to Elementor, you can come in here and uh, check the box, but I am not going to uh, do that. Let's move on to style. Uh, we'll talk about this one a bit later, actually. Integrations. If you're working with Google Maps and you need to install the API key, this is exactly where uh, you would install it. Also, if you end up installing other plugins like, let's say, PayPal or Stripe or things like that, and you need to integrate them with Elementor, it will be on this page where you will find the options to do so. You do have the Advanced tab. You don't need to change anything in here. Basically, most of these are for security and for uh, speed. 
if you notice an issue with Elementor, maybe your site is becoming very, very, very slow, you can come in here right now and switch the CSS print method from external file to internal embedding, but only do this if you're having issues with your speed and it's not because you're using some other bloated plugin or your web host isn't good enough for things like that. Only change this as a last uh, resort. Same goes with the switch uh, editor loader method. If you want to troubleshoot issues on your website, you will come in here and enable this. The unfiltered file uploads, Elementor has kind of like an inbuilt security where if you try to upload images to the Elementor uh, system, Elementor will, will take a look and see whether or not the file is actually uh, safe to work with. By enabling this feature, which is to enable unfiltered file uploads, you do run the risk of uploading cropped files onto your website. So I would recommend you keep this one disabled. Uh, same goes with Google Fonts Load. Again, you don't need to change anything in here. Just keep that one on default. If you want to work with Font Awesome 4, you can come in here right now and enable that feature. And then finally, you have experiments. This is where you will have access to all the latest features that Elementor are currently working on. You can see the status of most of these is set to beta, beta, alpha, beta, and so on. In most cases, you want to keep these ones on default, all right? But there is one I can recommend that you activate, and that is the improved asset loading. This is meant to reduce the, the amount of code on each page built with Elementor. What that means is that your pages will typically load faster as a result. Even though it's in beta, I have been using this for quite some time and it seems to be working. So I'm going to go ahead now and activate the improved asset loading. I'm also going to activate the improved uh, CSS loading as well. Please, if in the future, on this same website you've been working on, you notice certain issues, you may want to come back in here and disable this too, but I believe it should be fine. So I'm going to come down in here and save those changes. Okay, one more thing I want to mention really, really quickly is you have role manager. If you have several kinds of users on your site with different kinds of roles, in here, you can determine who can actually use Elementor. So say for example, you don't want a user with the role of contributor to work with Elementor. You come in here to contributor and simply check no access to editor. With the paid version of Elementor, you have access to more features. And then our tools, in here, this one is actually very, very, very important, the regenerate CSS and data. If you make changes like the color of your text, the size of your text, you save those changes, and you're not seeing those changes take effect on your site, as long as you're sure that it isn't caching from your computer or from your server, you may want to come in here and try to regenerate files and data. What this will do is that it will rebuild the CSS style sheet, and hopefully that should fix the problem, and you'll be able to see uh, your changes. Sync library, save mode, debug bar, we'll ignore that one for now. Replace URL, if you have broken links on your site and you want, you want to point them to new links, you come in here, add the old link, go to the second box, add the new link, and then simply click on replace URL and you fixed the uh, broken link. Version control, if for some reason in the future you upgrade to the latest version of Elementor and something breaks on your site, maybe your site doesn't work as well as it used to, you can come in here right now and simply roll back to the previous version. That's what this feature uh, is in here for. If you want to become a beta taster and work with uh, the unofficial, unofficially released versions of Elementor that are still in progress, this typically have plenty of bugs and issues. So if you're interested in being a bug hunter for Elementor, uh, you can come in here right now and enable. And then maintenance mode, again, if your site is under construction or you're making some major changes, you don't want anyone to be able to access your site during that time. You can come in right now and choose coming soon or choose maintenance. And then you'll have to build a page that will be displayed for maintenance or so coming soon. You'll choose that template right here. And then while your page is under maintenance or coming soon, uh, you can choose who will be able to have access uh, to your website at the time. And then finally, import export kit. You can export your template kits to, uh, to use on, a, on, a, on another website, or you can even import 
uh, a template kit from uh, an external site uh, if you uh, wanted to. So you simply click on import template kit and then right here you'll be able to uh, do so. I might show you how to do this uh, a bit later uh, in the course. And uh, finally, finally, system info. If you need to troubleshoot your website and you go to Elementor support, they ask you say, and they say, hey, can you provide us with the information of your setup? This is where you can provide all the necessary information. You simply come in here, download system info, send it to the support guys at Elementor, and then they will be able to uh, help you. So that's essentially it for the main settings for Elementor. Thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next class. All right, so with all the boring stuff out of the way, let me now show you the UI for Elementor, the user interface, and how Elementor actually works. Now, I'm on my pages right here, and what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go ahead and edit the home page. And what you're going to do is what you'll see right up here, you will see edit with Elementor. It's going to be this big blue button right here. So let's go ahead now, click on that. And what will happen here is that Elementor will be launched to work on this particular page. Okay, this is the home page. Now on the left, obviously, you can see the box for Elementor, the UI. The very first thing I want to show you here is the three buttons right here, the menu, basically. You click in there, and right here, you will have access to things like the site settings, theme builder, which we'll talk about a bit later. But very quickly, let's come down here to user preferences. And I don't know about you, maybe you like the light theme. I do like the dark theme. So what I'm going to do here is for the UI theme, I'm going to switch from auto detect to dark. I prefer just the black background and the white text. It's just so much cooler, in my opinion. Again, <laughs> this is entirely subjective, but I'm going to keep it at dark. Let's go back. And now in here, you can find something within Elementor, anywhere, anywhere in Elementor if you want to. You can view the page, or then you can exit to the dashboard. But let's go back. Now, right here, you have elements and then you have global. Global only works with the paid version of Elementor. That's when if you want to save your particular block of content and use that same block on another page anywhere on your website, that's what global basically refers to. But don't worry, we'll talk about that one a bit later. But these are your elements, right? You've got basic elements like your inner section, your heading, image, text editor. So say for example, you wanted to add an image to your page, you would simply click on the image element and then simply drop it inside the box right there. And then from here, you can choose the image that you want to work with. So just as an example, let me choose the image of uh, this girl right here holding the Brazilian flag. And uh, there it is. The thing is, most of the elements you'll be working with typically have three main uh, compartments, if I can call it that way. You will have the content area in this case, this is where you can add either text, image, video, files, audio, and so on. And then you will have style where you can do things like maybe change the color, change the size, add like a background image, change the height, and so on. And then you will have the advanced tab where you can do things like add margins, patterns, you know, spacing. You could also add some motion effects, uh, some borders, and so on. So usually, most of the elements you'll be working with will have these three different uh, tabs or compartments. So going back in here, when you click on the button up here, this will give you access to all the elements. So you can see we've got the basic elements in here, video, button, spacer, and so on. And now you can see the ones under Pro, under the paid version of Elementor, Posts, Portfolio, Gallery, so many of them. So you can see right now, because we're not using the paid version of Elementor, we don't have access to all these elements, but thankfully, because we are working with the Essential Add-ons plugin, we do have access to quite uh, many additional elements for free. You can see right here under Essential Add-ons. So we've got things like the Advanced Accordion, our Call to Action button, Creative button, and so on. So we're going to be working with uh, quite a few of these elements. But going back to Elementor, on the general, we do have access to more uh, blocks as well. Let me just uh, close this accordion. So on the general, with the, with the free version of Elementor, we have access to more elements like the icon box, 
testimonial, social icons, and so on. Let me close this one. And then you've got site. Unfortunately, these elements are only available with the paid version of Elementor. Uh, you've got WooCommerce, again, only available with the paid version of Elementor. We've talked about essential add-ons. So this is the other plugin we installed, the header and footer. This plugin will allow us to build a custom header and a custom footer for our website. So we'll have access to elements like the navigation menu, element, page title, uh, site title, site logo, and so on. And then last but not least, we do have access to the WordPress widgets, like your pages, calendar, audio, meta, search, and so on. Okay, that's that for the elements. Now down here, okay, you have access to a few more settings. It may sound kind of overwhelming, but don't worry, once you begin working with Elementor, it's actually not that overwhelming. It's actually very, very easy to work with. Right here under settings, in here, you can do things like change the, the title of the page, change the status from publish to pending review. You can add your featured image. You can also choose to hide the title, which in fact, let's do that. Okay, I'm gonna hide the title. I mean, how many times do you go on a website and then on the home page it says home? Eh, people don't do that. So let's just go ahead and hide the title. And then the page layout, I'll explain this one a bit later as we progress in the course. And then you have the, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you do have the reading progress bar. This is provided by the Essential Add-ons uh, plugin. Basically, the point here is that you may have seen on some websites before where as you begin to scroll down the page, you will see like a bar either moving uh, horizontally or vertically indicating uh, how much of the content you've actually read and how much more content you still have to read. So you do have that feature in here. We'll take a look at that a bit later. And then table of contents scroll to top. Don't worry. We'll talk about those later. And then under style right here, you can change the body type. You can add like a background color if you want to. You come in here right now, choose like the primary color of blue and so on. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and uncheck that one. And then finally, you've got the advanced where you can add your own custom uh, JavaScript code or some custom uh, CSS code, which unfortunately is only available with the uh, paid version of Elementor. Okay. Let's move on. Next to settings, you, you've got the navigator. Now, the thing about navigator is that once you begin to add elements and content onto your page, the navigator uh, button will allow you to see basically the entire structure in a hierarchical format of your entire page. So it can be very, very easy for you to quickly look for a particular element or block that you want to work with. That's what the navigation or navigator button is there for. Next is the history. So if you make things like change the color or basically if you do anything at all, it will be in the history tab. And you can see right here, right from the very beginning, when we started editing, you know, we changed the user preference for the UI theme from light to, from uh, auto to dark. You can see it's right there. Uh, we added an image, we hit the page title. So you can easily come in here right now and reverse any one of these actions. And then you've got revisions. Revisions is a bit more, uh, what's it now? A bit more robust. Typically on the revisions, this is where once you've updated or you've saved your page, you will see those changes under your revision tab. So it's a bit more robust than actions. So that's that. And then in here, you've got the responsive mode. You click in here and right now you can choose either desktop view, uh, tablet view, or the mobile view. And the thing is, you can even become very, very, very are specific with the width of your screen. So say for example, if I chose tablet right here, you see these handles left and right, you can actually move to a certain uh, dimension. And of course up here, you will have the width and the height. So if you have a, a specific kind of device that you want to see how your website will look like on that particular device with very specific dimensions, you can come in here and change the dimensions for the width as well as the height uh, as well. But I'm gonna go back switch to uh, the regular desktop. And then right here, you can preview your changes once you've made them. And then finally, you can update or right here under save options, you can save as a draft or you can save as a template. Saving as a template means that you can reuse the exact same content 
are on another page. So this is basically kind of like a breakdown of how Elementor works uh, behind the scenes, the user interface, how to add elements. Again, don't worry if it seems very, very overwhelming. As you begin to work with Elementor, uh, it will become very, very easy for you to work with. So that was basically a crash course on the Elementor user interface. Thank you for watching. Join me in the next class where we'll now begin to set our global variables. I'll see you then. I just want to spend a few more minutes to walk you through the general concepts of sections, columns, as well as elements and paddings and margins. So as I've shown you previously, if you want to add an element, you can just simply drag from the left hand side and then just simply drop it inside. Now, the thing is automatically, whenever you're adding elements with Elementor, a section and a column will be created for that particular element. We just dropped in the text editor element. And now you would notice right up here, we have this blue line here. This is going to be the section holding the column that's holding the text editor. Notice right here, you have got this brown button right here. And if I hover, hover on it, it says edit column. And now this is the actual element itself, the actual text editor. So once again, the way Elementor works is that you will have an element, whether it's an image, a video, a button, and then a column will hold, will contain that element. And then both the column and the element will be inside a section. So it's kind of like a hierarchical structure, section, column, then the actual element. Now, just like with editing the element where you'll have access to content, style, advanced, you can also edit the column holding that element. Right here, you can see I've hovered on the button here. It says edit column. You click in there and now you'll have access to layout, style, and advanced. So with layout, you can do things like maybe reduce the uh, length of the column. You can change the alignment. You can add an HTML tag for it. You can style the column. Maybe you want to add like a, you know, like a black background or like, you know, red background, or you want to add an image, things like that. So that a lot of things you can do are with the column. Now, if you right click on the edit column button, you can do things like add a new column, duplicate the column. You could even copy and paste the style. Maybe you added like a black background. You change the font style of the text and you want to reuse that style, you simply copy the style and then you can paste the style uh, elsewhere. The same thing goes with the section in here as well. If I click on the edit section button up here, now you see I have access to layout, style, advanced. Like with layout, I can change this to full width. I can maybe change the, si the, the length of the width, make it very, very wide or very, very, very narrow. I can change the height as well if I wanted to. I can do a lot of things. Same goes with the style. Again, I can add like a background color. If I wanted to, I can do several things like add uh, motion effects and so on. And just like with the column, if I right click on the edit section button right here, you can say I can do things like edit the section and I can duplicate. I can even save as a template, which we'll talk about uh, when we're using Elementor Pro. Now, let me quickly talk to you about the concept of margins and patterns because uh, this is going to be very, very, very important. Now, I've got a section in here holding this text editor, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image into another section and let me just quickly choose an image to work with. Let me go to my media library. Uh, let me choose this image right here. Okay. Now take a look at this. Okay. Let me add a background color to the section here. Don't worry. I'll show you all this a bit later. All right. What exactly are margins? Margins are used to add space between sections. So right now we've got a section here holding this text editor with the red background. We have another section in here holding the image. So if I wanted to create plenty of space between these two, I could actually use an element in here called the spacer element. You can say I can drag spacer and then drop it in between these two sections. But another way to do so would be to go to either one of these sections. So I'm going to go to the first section in here. I'm going to go to advanced and then right here, you've got margin. Now, please note that by default, you can add margins and patterns to all four sides of a section to the left, right, top and bottom. Right now, if I was to add a margin to either top or bottom, you can see they are chained. 
which means whatever you add to top it will, it will be added to the bottom as well. If you wanted to add values for one specific side, you want to start from zero first of all. Okay, zero. You come in here and now you can see you can unlink the value. So right now you can simply add for top. Our right and left margins for Elemental are set to auto by default. You can't uh, make any changes in there. But now notice that if I begin to add margins to the bottom of the first section, notice that the section holding the image is now being pushed down. That's because I'm creating space between this first section and this second section. So also, if I wanted to, I could do the reverse for the second section. I can go to edit section here near for the second one, go to advanced, unlink the values, and now instead of adding margin at the bottom, I can add at the top. So now you can see we're pushing the section holding the image downwards from the first section. So that's, that's what margins are used for. They're used for creating space in between sections. What of patterns? Because right here you've got patterns. Patterns are used to create space between an element and its border or its column. As an example, I'm going to use the text editor in here. All right, so I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go to advanced. And now right here, you can see I've got the pattern available. I'm going to unlink the values. And now if I begin to add pattern right here, you can see I'm creating space between the text editor and its own section right here at the top. I can go to the bottom, do the exact same thing as well. So you can see right now, I'm basically creating space for my text editor within its own section. That's what patterns are used for. They're used to create space for an element inside of its own column or the section. That's basically what our patterns are used for. So that's the difference between margins and patterns. Margins are used to create space between sections. Patterns are used to create space uh, between a section and uh, the element contained inside of it. Hopefully, uh, you now have uh, a, a good understanding of what uh, margins and paddings are. Uh, one more quick thing, you could also rearrange sections by simply clicking and dragging. So if I wanted to move the section holding the margin, I'm sorry, holding the image to the top, I would simply click and hold the edit section button. Now you can see it's allowing me to move. I can move it all the way up here. Just wait for the blue dash or the blue line to appear and then simply release and then drop the image right there. So you do have this option in here with Elementor as well that allows you to rearrange uh, sections. You could also uh, rearrange columns. Let me just quickly duplicate this column in here. Let me change this image real quick just to give you a very, very quick demonstration. Let me choose this image. So I can simply click where you have the edit column button and then rearrange. There you can see, rearrange back as you can see. So you do have that option available uh, with Elementor as well. So don't worry, as we begin to work with Elementor, you begin to, begin to discover a lot more features and functionalities uh, of Elementor. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. Welcome back. So now that I've shown you a brief introduction to the user interface of Elementor, let's take a look at the global variables and how you can set the kinds of font families you want to use, the colors, and so on. Now, on the same UI interface right here, you're going to go to the menu button up here and then now go over to your site settings. All right. Now, here's the thing. We could set global colors, colors that can be used all across our website. To do that, click on global colors. And now this would be the default colors that you would have uh, blue, darkish gray, lightish gray, and then uh, lime. So this would be for your primary uh, headers, your secondary headers, your text. This would be your regular body text. And then accent is usually for like links or buttons. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change these to some colors I have over here. So in order to change them, I'm going to click inside. And for primary, I'm going to go with white. Okay, so white is going to be F, 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 six Fs. Is basically for white, that'll be for my primary. And then for secondary, we're actually gonna keep this as it is. But then for text, we're gonna go with black, okay? Black is going to be six zeros. So one, two, three, four, five, six. These are what we call the hexadecimal values, okay? So six zeros for black, six Fs for white. And then lastly, for the accent, which would be for the links, 
Uh, I do have my color in here. Let me just quickly grab the color from my other screen, come right here and paste that. So it's a shade of orange. It's basically a DCA 570. Now you could decide to add your own custom colors as well. You can come in here, click on add color, and you can name this one like anything. You could give it like, a, let's say, the uh, special, uh, special color. Okay, I'll show you how this works a bit later, but let's just call this one special color. And in here, I'm going to click on the box and let's just choose something reddish. Okay, so I have my own custom color called special color. I'm going to go ahead now and simply update. Okay, so we've set our global colors, which, which we can use throughout the site. But then we also have access to global fonts. Font families are very, very, very important. So check this out. I'm going to click on global fonts. The first one here is going to be primary. This would be for your primary headers. Now, let me just take a look at my other screen in here because I have chosen to go for the font family. I've chosen to go with uh, Oswald. Oswald is a particular Google font that I like. So I'm going to choose Oswald for the font family. The weight here is going to be 700. So it's going to be a little bit heavier. And then I'm going to transform this to upper case. And then I'll leave the other ones line height, letter spacing, word spacing, and so on. Let's leave those as they are. Next is going to be the secondary. And then secondary, again, I'm going to go with Oswald. Okay. Oswald for secondary. And then the size here, I'm actually going to go with uh, 20 pixels because it's going to be a, a little bit smaller. 20 pixels and then the weight here would be uh, 600. And uh, there you go. That's for the secondary. And then text. This will be our regular text. I'm actually going to switch font families over here to uh, Nurito Sans. Okay. So let's search for uh, Nurito. Oh, is it? I'm sorry. Is it Nurito? Nunito. I'm sorry. Even with my glasses, I still can't see properly. Nunito Sans. That's going to be for uh, text. And then the size here would be uh, 18 pixels and the weight is going to be 500. And that is that. Last but not least, we do have the accent. So accent is going to be Roboto. Let's stick with Roboto for that one. And then weight here will be 500. So we're not changing anything in here. I'm going to go ahead now and update. The point here is that we can actually use these font families, these font colors anywhere on our site. As an example, let me close this, okay? And let me go ahead now and add a heading. So I'm going to click drag, drop the heading element in here. Now take a look at this. If I was to go to style, all right? Right here you can see we have the typography option to choose what kind of type of typography we want to work with or the text color. Now take a look at this. If I click on this icon right here, this global looking icon, I click in there can you now see we can choose from the five options, primary, secondary, text, accent, and even the special color that we added. That's how you can make use of the global colors that we've just set. Same goes with the typography. I click in here again, and now I can choose either to go with the primary text, secondary text, regular text, or the accent. That's how these would work. But let me show you something even more interesting. If I go back to the site settings, just underneath the design system, you have your theme style. And if I click on typography in here, this is where we can now set specific font families, color sizes for our H1, our H2 tag, H3, and so on. But in order for us to be able to make use of this particular system, we're going to need to disable the default colors and fonts from the settings page. Okay. Remember, let me just quickly go ahead, update this. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If we go back to the back end, uh, let me come right here, go to exit to dashboard. If you go back to your elementor uh, settings, elementor settings right here, we're going to have to disable the default colors and fonts in order to make use of this new uh, theme style editor. So I'm going to check these two boxes, save those changes. And now let me close this. Let me refresh this page again. Okay. 
Now take a look at this. If I go back in here, go to site settings, and I come down here to typography, now I am able to set a specific text color for the body, text size, for the links, H1s, and so on. Also, if I go back, if I go back to the regular back end, and let me just close this, and I added my heading again in here. If I go to style, right here, if I go to text color, I still have access to the colors I've set earlier. And then also, for the typography, I still have access to the secondary uh, text. Basically, the same options I said earlier, I still have access to them. So, basically, let's just go back to the set settings one more time. Let me, I just wanted to show you that I still have access to those options. Let's go back to the theme style typography. Okay, I do have my options in here that I've already set. So, what I'm going to do here is, this. okay, let's first of all choose the typography for our body. So, right here for body, I'm going to go over here to text color. We're going to choose our black. That'll be for the text. For the typography, I'm simply going to go with text. Okay, remember we set text to be uh, noon into sans, size of 18 pixels, and then the weight of 500. Okay, so that's going to be for the body. Good. Now for the link, let me just check what I have in here. For the link, I'm going to go with color, the accent color, and then typography, I'm going to go with accent as well. And now for the H1s, okay, this is going to be a little bit different. So for the H1s, what I've done right here is for the family, I've set that one to default, but the size here is going to be uh, 100 pixels, okay? Very, 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 very massive. And then the weight here is going to be uh, 600. We're hardly going to use H1s on our site, so don't worry about the, the huge size. So I'm going to keep that one at 100. Now let's go over to the H2. And for H2, I do have the size here. So I'm going to click on typography. The size here, I've set it up to 32 pixels. So 32 pixels. And then I do have the weight here to be 700. Basically, this is the main uh, header we're going to be working with. Uh, actually, my apologies, I set it to 36. Sorry, 36 pix pixels for H2. Okay, and then for the H3... Check this out. For the H3, uh, the color here is going to be the accent color, the orange color. And then the size here is going to be 22 pixels. Okay. And then the uh, family here is going to be primary. Okay, so which would be Oswald. Let me also set the primary uh, font family here to be uh, Oswald. That will be for the H2. So... Basically, H2s would be 36 size and pixel. The family of Oswald, they'll be uppercase and then 700 uh, in weight. And then finally, I've also set for the H4, same color would be the accent color. And then the size here is going to be uh, 18 pixels. Okay, so uh, let's choose Oswald again. And then the size here would be uh, 18 pixels pixels, the same size as our body text. And then one more, the very, very last one would be the H5, which I don't really think we're going to work with that much, but let's just set it up H5 and then typography would be the same uh, secondary or primary if you want. And then the size here would be 16 pixels. Okay. And uh, there you go. So I'm going to go ahead now and simply update this. And that's it. Now, I know this was a very, very long video with me just, you know, talking about, you know, colors and stuff. But the point here is that on our site, if we ever add an H2, automatically, it's going to inherit the values from here. So our H2s right now would have the font family of Oswald, size of 36 pixels, and then a weight of 700. And then the same goes with the H3s, H4s, and so on. We've basically set up the global values for our headers, as well as our body text, but also we've set our global colors, which we can use over and over again. We've set five of them, primary, secondary, text, accent, special color. We're not going to use special color. I just, you know, wanted to show you how you can add your own uh, additional uh, custom colors uh, if you wanted to. But that's basically all setting up 
uh, global font families, colors, and sizes. Jump in the very next video where we'll now begin to build out the header for our website. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and build the header for our website. And this is exactly what it looks like right now. And it does not look good at all. This is what we're trying to accomplish. You can see the header right here. We have the logo on the left. And then we have the main menu on the right. However, I want to show you something. Okay, if I was to go to another page, let's say the about page as an example, right here, you can see that the header is different. This one has a black background, while the header on the home page doesn't have any background at all. It simply blends into the background image here. So basically, we need to create two different headers one specifically for the home page and then the other for the rest of our pages now how do we do this before i show you that let me just drag the demo website away now before i show you how to do that i want to show you something else okay if i, if I was to go to edit with elementor and i went to site settings in addition to being able to set your global fonts and your colors and all that you can also make changes to the site identity right here where you have settings. So if I click on site identity right here, we can change the site name to, uh, I'm gonna call mine Passport Travel. That's the name of the website. And then the, 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 the tagline will be uh, when travel meets adventure, okay? So for the logo, I'm going to choose the logo right here. Let's insert that one. And then for the five icon, I'm going to choose the image right here with the one with the green uh, background. So I'm going to insert that. And there you go. We have our site identity. Now, you could also come down here to header, okay, and make different kinds of changes. You can choose to hide the logo, show the tagline, increase the content width or reduce the content width. It's all up to you. But since we're going to create our own custom headers, we don't need to change anything in here at all. So I'm going to go ahead now and simply update. And now check this out. Okay, I'm going to go back to the back end. All right, exit to dashboard. And now let's create our header. I'm going to come down here to our parents. Here you will see Elemental Header and Footer Builder. This is from the plugin. So I'm going to click in there. And now I'm going to click on Add New. And now let's call this one the Home Page Header. Okay, then right here where you have type of template, we're going to choose header and then we can choose, okay, where would we like to display this header? Since it's specifically going to be for the front page, I'm going to choose down here where you have specific target. I'm going to choose specific pages and then right here, I'll simply type in home and there you go. So now this particular header will only be displayed on the home page. And then for user roles right here, you can choose, okay, maybe it's, you want to display this header only to logged in users or logged out users or editors. So you have a lot of flexibility. I'm just going to keep this blank because we want it to be for everyone. Now here, you've got this uh, option, enable layout for canvas template. Now the thing with Elementor is that in addition to the default template and the one provided by your theme, Elementor gives you two custom templates. One. It's called the Elemental Canvas, the other full width. Full width simply means that your content can extend to the edges of your screen. So it basically goes full width. There are like no margins or paddings. Elemental Canvas simply means that you're not going to have any header or footer. It's basically a blank Elemental uh, template. We're not going to work with the Canvas template, so there is really no need to enable this layout. But I'm going to choose the Elemental Full Width template. Let's go ahead now and hit Publish. Okay, and now I'm going to click on edit with Elementor. So what we're trying to try achieve here is, is, let me bring back the demo site. It's basically going to be a section with two columns. The one on the left, the left column will have the logo, while the column on the right will have the main menu. And we also want the column on the right, the one containing the main menu, to have more width. So check this out, okay, right here, I'm going to click on the plus button here. And now we can choose our structure and I'm going to choose this one right here. This one will have uh, the first column will have a, a third of the entire section while the second column will have two thirds. OK, so right here, since we're editing the section, as you can see, for the content width, we could actually go full width if we wanted to. But 
I'm going to go with boxed and I'm going to choose 1240 pixels. This is just my own personal preference. I love 1240 pixels. And now in here for the very first column, I'm going to click inside. I'm going to scroll all the way down here and we're trying to add the logo, right? So I'm going to add site logo right there. Click, drop it inside. And now we have our logo. Now you can see it because the logo has white text and this is a white background, but just bear with me. Okay. I'm going to choose the image size here. I'm going to go with full for now. Okay. And then let's go ahead and click on the edit button for this section. All right. So I've clicked in there. I'm going to go back to style and then right here where you have background type, I'm going to choose classic. And now I'm going to choose the color black so now you can actually see the logo right okay now let's go over to the second column and we're going to add our navigation element so right here you can see navigation menu click drag drop that inside and then you can see main menu is selected by default however we need to make quite a number of changes notice right here that with the main with the main menu the text is in capital letters it's in white it's also aligned to the right and also in the center. So we need to do four things. Let's go back in here. First thing I'm going to do is while editing the navigation menu right here, you have layout click in there. And now we're going to choose align to the right, as you can see, right? So now it's to the right. Now let's go over to style and we're going to come down here to typography, click on the edit button, come down here to transform, choose uppercase okay and then for text color let's click on the global icon right there and then choose primary for white good but now how do we align the menu items in the middle vertically what you want to do here is you're going to click on the edit column button here this particular button right here you click in there and now here you can see we have vertical align we're going to choose middle and there you go that is it but we're not done yet for the logo. Let's click on the edit button for the site logo. And then the alignment here, we're going to go to left. Okay. You, you can't really see the, the difference just yet, but just bear with me. We're going to choose that one to the left. Okay. Let's go ahead now and update. Okay. And now let's just take a look at what we have. View the page. And there you go. Now you can see our home page has this particular header right here. But then if I was to go to, let's say the about page as an example, you can see we don't have that header at all. Uh, if I was to go to the uh, contact page as an example, you can see we don't have uh, that header. So this right here, the home page now has this particular header with the black background, the logo, and then the uh, menu items. Now to round this up, I'm actually going to make a few changes. Let's go back to the section. Okay. And I know I said the content width to be 1,240 pixels, but I've done some further testing and I think it's best we go with the full width. Okay. So let's go with full width for now. And then this column, the one holding the logo, we're going to reduce it to 25%. Okay. So 25% while the column holding the menu items will have uh, 75%. And then let's also make a change to the logo. I'm going to click edit logo. Let's go to style. And then for the max width, we're going to set this to 75%. Okay. A question you might have here is why are we setting the max width and not the actual width? Here's the thing. Okay. When you set the width for the logo, the logo will always have that width regardless of the screen size. But when you're working with max width, you're basically saying, Hey, the logo should never exceed this width. And then in situations where the screen size isn't large enough to accommodate the full width of the logo, reduce the size. So basically max width is much better for responsive design and you always want to be responsive. So we're going to set that to 75 pixels. And now if we update, and if we take a look at our header, uh, you can see right now that it looks so much similar to what we have uh, over here on the demo website. Last thing to do is 
we're going to duplicate this header for the second uh, header. So basically, here's what we're going to do. Okay, well, I'm going to go back to the back end. And instead of creating the second header for the rest of the website, we're simply going to come in here and then you'll see EA duplicator. That's the essential add-ons duplicator. So I'm going to go ahead now and simply duplicate the homepage header. Now you will see draft elementor. Let's go ahead now, click on edit. Okay. And then we'll make a few changes in here. We'll call this one the global header. Okay. You can give it any other name that you want, but I'm going to call this one global header. And then right here, type of template. Yes, it's the header. And then the display on, we're going to go with entire website. But then to be on the safe side, I'm going to come in here and say add exclusion rule. So we're saying, hey, do not display this one on the home page. So down here where you have a specific page, I'm going to come in here and simply type in home. So we're making sure that this header will never be displayed on the home page. It will only be displayed across the entire website. And uh, there you go. So template full width as well. Let's go ahead now and hit publish. And there you go. So just to go back in here, let's refresh this page. So that's the header for the home page. Uh, but now take a look at this. Okay. If I was to go to any other page, let's say the about page as an example. Now you will see that the duplicate header isn't showing. Let's go to the articles page as well. You can see again, the duplicate header is not showing. Despite the fact that we set the duplicate header to show on every page except the home page. What exactly is going on here? And trust me, it took me several hours just trying to figure out exactly why this was not working, but I figured it out. What you want to do is this, okay, go back to the duplicate header right here. Okay. This is the duplicate header we created. What you want to do is this, okay, just try to initiate. Actually, let me just go back to the proper backend. So you're not confused. All right. So from here, okay. So from here, just click on edit with Elementor. Okay. Edit with Elementor. And then what you're going to do is right here, just initiate any kind of change. Let's say you add the heading element in here, for example. Okay. Drop that in there. Now, do you see that the update button is available? Okay. I'm going to go back in here, close this. Okay. The whole point here is you want to make some sort of change on the header so that this update button down here would be triggered. Now we can update and now it should work. So if I was to go back to my articles page in here and now refresh, now you can see that the duplicate header is now showing. I go back to the home page is the exact same header. I go to the about page. And of course it's the exact same header as well. So that's exactly what you should do. Whenever you try duplicating your headers or footers on the duplicate, simply go inside, edit with element or add any element, remove that element just to trigger the update button update. And now that new uh, duplicate header or footer will now be in full effect. So that's it for the video. We've created our two headers. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. In the previous video, we successfully created our two headers, one for the homepage and the other for the rest of the website. But now we're going to create our global footer. And the good news here is that we only need to create one uh, footer. And this is exactly what we're trying to create. We're going to have this image here on the left and then some content information, social media icons, and then the, uh, the site copyright basically down here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and quickly do this. I'm going to click on add new and we're going to call this one the global footer. Select option here will be footer and of course display across the entire website. And I uh, will change the template to full width. And there we go. Let's go ahead, publish. And now let's edit with Elementor. Now I want you to pay very close attention to a massive difference between the header and the footer. See, in the header that we have here, we basically have just two columns, the one on the left holding the logo, the one on the right holding the, col the main menu. But for the footer, notice that it is a little bit different. Yes, we still have two columns, one holding this image, the other one holding the content information. But then down here, this copyright text is actually a third column. It's not under 
this first column here, it's actually a separate column on its own. So in order to create this kind of a multi-column section, we're going to make use of a new element called the inner section. It's the very, it's, it's actually the very first element that you have. So it's the one right here, inner section. So I'm going to click drag and then drop it inside. Okay. So first things first though is I'm going to go ahead and edit the very first section. If you're having trouble trying to uh, click on the parent sec uh, section, basically, you can always use your navigator right here. And then you can see right here, we have the section column and then inner section. So I'm going to click on section right now. And we're going to change the content width right here to full width and then columns gap. We're going to choose no gap. The reason is that if you pay close attention, you can see right now that where you have the image, there is no space. There is no padding. There are no margins whatsoever. The image is directly right there at the border of the bottom. That's why we're choosing a uh, no gap here. We don't want to have any gaps at all. The same is going to go with the inner section as well. But before we jump in there, let's add a background color. So I'm going to go to background type. And of course, we're going to choose our uh, black. So we're going to have a black background for the footer. OK, next up now is going to be the inner section. So I'm going to click on inner section right here from the navigator. Again, we're going to go full width and then column columns gap here. We're going to say no gap as well. All right. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and handle the very first column in here, which will have our image. So I'm going to drop the image element in there, choose this image right here. And uh, in case you're wondering, this is actually in Peru. It's uh, a place called uh, Huacaquina or Huacachina. I'm not exactly sure of how it's pronounced, but it's basically kind of like a desert um, area. You can do sandboarding and so on. Pretty awesome place to check out. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and switch this one to full. OK, but then uh, here's the thing. All right, we're going to change the column widths. We're going to make the first column in here. We're going to actually make it a bit wider. So we're going to go all the way to 63 pixels, 63 percent, actually. So so 63 percent and then 37 uh, percent for the second column. But we're going to make a change. Uh, to the image. The image is way too tall. So let's go ahead, edit the image, and then we're going to go over here to style. And now here, I'm going to choose 450 pixels. Okay, so it's just about tall enough and wide enough. Okay, that's the image right there. Now, let me just close the navigator. For the second column, we're going to add a series of different elements. The very first one here would be the heading element. And this one will be our contact. OK, I'm going to type it all in capital letters contact. It's going to be an H2 for the style. Obviously, we're going to go to the text color and simply choose primary. OK, and now we're going to choose another heading again. I'm going to drop it just underneath the contact right there. This one is going to be a telephone. All right. So again, capital letters, telephone. However, we're going to make this one an H3. OK, actually, let's make it an H4. We're going to make it an H4 and we're going to add some information. So what I'm going to do right here is I'll simply right click and then simply duplicate. And now we're going to make this one an H5. All right. So the actual telephone number will be an H5. So let's change the number right here to 090 space uh, 645 space 3417. That's going to be the telephone number. But I'm going to go over to style and the typography. Let's actually choose text. All right. I prefer this uh, text pattern. So we're going to choose that one. And then we're also going to duplicate the telephone again, drag it down here just underneath the telephone number. We're also going to duplicate the telephone number itself. OK, and then drag underneath telephone. Now, oops, sorry, that went all the way up there. Let's bring it back down here. OK, now we're going to edit telephone. The second telephone right here, we're going to change this one to email. So this is basically how to walk smart. Okay, just simply duplicate whenever you can. 
and simply uh, make the necessary edits. And now I'm going to edit the telephone here, the telephone number. We're going to change the to an email. So my email is Alex uh, at passport travel.com uh, does that look correct Alex at passport travel.com okay yep that is correct and then last but not least we're going to have our address okay so let's also duplicate the email heading one more time let's drag drop that in here change email to address and now for the actual address, we're going to use a text editor as opposed to a heading because it's going to be multiple lines of text. So I'm going to drop the text editor right there. And I do have a very interesting uh, address right here. I don't know if this is actually a real address. I don't remember <laughs> where I saw this address from, but it's 13 Rue Emile Zola. Okay, now I'm going to press Shift Enter not just enter because if you press enter you're going to have like a double spacing so use shift key and then enter so you have a single line spacing and now i'm going to type in 69002 uh, leon shift enter again and then we're going to type in france okay and uh, we're going to go over to style uh, typography we're going to go with text and of course text color will be primary and there you go and last but not least we're going to have our social media icons very 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 important social media is going to be down here on the general so let's add a social media and of course for facebook well we're going to change the color from official color to custom the primary color here would be white the secondary color would be black so basically you'll have the white background and then the actual icons themselves will be black. If this was a real website you were building, this is where you would add the link to your Facebook page. So that's for Facebook. Let's just do the exact same thing for Twitter as well. White would be the primary color, black as the secondary color. Last but not least, YouTube, official color, custom. Primary color is white, secondary color is black. And then the shape here, we're going to change the shape to circle. All right, and then alignment, we're actually going to align it to the left. We're almost there, but then notice that there is some spacing with the actual contact information and then the image. So what you're going to do right here is we're going to go right here to the column holding all this contact information. You click in there, go over, uh, first of all, vertical align, let's align to the middle, okay? And then go to advanced, and then right here you have padding. I'm going to unlink this values together because the thing about this is by default, whatever value you add to your padding, to whether top, right, bottom, or left, it will duplicate across the remaining three sides. So we don't want this. We only want to add padding to one side. So I'm going to click this button right here to unlink the values. So just in case you don't know, pattern basically is a way of creating space between your content and its border. So we're gonna add pattern to the left, as you can see, looking much better already. And I'm gonna go all the way to 40 pixels. Okay, we're almost there. One more thing we're gonna add right now is going to be the copyright text. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here Okay, so right here under your elemental head and footer, you see copyright text, click drag. And now be very, 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 very careful. We're not dropping it under this uh, first column holding the image. We're dropping it on a separate column. You can see the blue line appearing, signifying that, okay, this is gonna be a separate uh, column. Notice right now that the blue line only is underneath the image, underneath the column holding the image. But if I drag my mouse just further down, just a little bit, now you can see the blue line extending across both columns. So now I'm going to drop the copyright text in there. And there it is. So text color in here will obviously be primary. Uh, typography, we're gonna go with text, align to the center. And we're actually gonna go over to typography again. And let's make this one just a little bit smaller than usual. And I think 16 pixels is about right. But we also want to add uh, some padding as well. So let's go over to advanced. Again, we're going to unlink the values. 
So we're going to add pattern of 20 pixels for the top 20 pixels for the bottom as well. We've done quite a lot. Let's go ahead now and update. And let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to go over here, refresh the page. And there you go. This is our footer right there. Now, I know you can see our white space down here, but that's simply because we don't have any uh, content yet on the home page. That's why you have this white space. I already added some content to the about page. So this is more like what it will now look like. You can see there's no more white space underneath because we actually do have uh, some content on the page. But there it is. We now have our footer well built out with the image from Peru, our copyright text, as well as some contact information. Thank you for watching. And of course, I'll see you in the next class. So now that we've built the headers and footer, it is now time for us to build our home page. And the very first section we're going to be building will be the banner. You can see right here we have the background image with the tropical uh, trees, the palm trees and the beach. And then, of course, the text where travel meets adventure and then the button that says uh, book your trip now. So. Also, of course, you would have noticed that the background basically blends into the header. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead now to edit the home page. I'm going to say edit with Elementor. And right here, you can notice that we have basically two columns, one on top, the one that contains where travel means adventure. And then we'll have another column containing the button book your trip now. So what I'm simply going to do here is this, all right, we do have a heading text in here, but just in case you don't see anything, just simply drag the heading element and drop it inside your box right here. And I'm simply going to say where, uh, where travel meets adventure. That is the major tagline for our website. And I'm going to make this one an H1. All right. But we're going to make some changes to the actual, uh, typography itself. So let's go to style. And for the typography in here, I am going to change the transform to uppercase. And we're also going to make the weight 900 just to make it kind of very, very, very thick. And then the style will make it italic as well. All right. That's that for the text for now. Let's go ahead now and add the background image for this section. So I'm going to click on the edit section button right here. The content width, we're going to keep this one boxed, but then the width here will be 1240 pixels. Okay. And now check this out. Okay. For the height, we're going to set it to a minimum height of a thousand pixels because we really want to show as much of that background image as possible. So let me make this 1000. And now we're going to go over to style background type classic. And now I'm going to choose the image and it's going to be, I do apologize. I actually do have uh, two separate ones in here for now. I will delete the uh, one we're not going to use. We're going to use the big out version. This one is just uh, 849 pixels in height, but this one is uh, 1,274. So we're going to make use of this one. So I'm going to insert that. And there you go. Now, let me show you some tricks regarding positioning your uh, background image. You've got different kinds of positions in here, center, 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 left, uh, center, right, and so on. So it's really up to you to choose the ideal angles of position uh, for your background image. Mine here that I've chosen is going to be bottom center. So here you get to actually see the palm trees, the beach as well. So it's for me, it's the best position. And then for the size, you do have several options in here. I'm going to go with cover. The difference between cover and contain is that contain will show the entire image. Okay. And content isn't always the best option because when you show the entire image, if the image isn't big enough for the entire screen, it will start to repeat itself. You can see in the background here, you, you kind of have the image repeating itself all over again, but with cover, you basically, you basically saying, Hey, try to ensure that the image will cover the entire screen. So that's why I've chosen our cover here, but we're also going to add a background overlay. 
So check this out. Okay, I'm going to go right here. You have background overlay. I'm going to click in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the background type as usual. But we're going to choose a black overlay. And then the opacity in here, I've actually gone with uh, 0.23. Okay, of course you can change this if you don't want to use 0.23. But now we're going to go back to the actual text. Let's go back in here. And of course the text color, we're going to make this one white. And there it is. Okay, we're also going to change the size as well. So I'm going to go all the way to 120 pixels. All right. And again, this is entirely subjective. You can make yours a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. But we're also going to change the alignment as well. Okay, so let's go to content. We're going to align it to the center. And there it is, Red Travel Meets Adventure. And then what we're going to do right now will be to add our button. So I'm going to drag the button right here element and I will drop it just beneath the headline. And of course, right here, we're going to say uh, book your trip now. Okay. And of course, this is where you would add the link to maybe a page or an external website like Agoda or booking.com. In fact, let's even do that. We could just say booking.com, uh, <laughs> right? Let's just do that booking.com just for the fun of it. And of course, we're going to align it to the center. Size here will be medium. And well, let's add an icon as well, okay? So I'm going to choose the icon library in here. Let's search for a plane. All right, I'm going to choose plane right there. Insert. You do have the option to change the icon position to after or before the text. But I want to keep that on before. And then the icon spacing, you could also add some spacing between the icon and the image. So I'm going to go with eight, okay, just to give it a little bit of some spacing. And now we're going to go over to style. And this is where we're going to make some uh, major changes. So the first change we're going to make in here would be the typography. The weight of the text is going to be 600. All right. And then transform to upper case. Now, because this is a link, you would notice that there is the uh, underline right there, but we don't want that one. So I'm going to go to style. I'm sorry, I'm going to go to decoration and then choose none. All right. We don't want any of the uh, the text, any of the underline uh, text in there. All right. Typographic color. Uh, let's text color right here. We're going to go with the uh, white. All right. And then for the button itself, right here, you'll have the background type. Let's click in there. And we're going to go with classic color here would be orange. All right. And now we're going to set a border as well. Solid. All right. And then what we're going to do for the border is we're going to change the border color to the orange color as well. And then we'll add a border radius just to make the circles, uh, the edges just a little bit circular. So we're going to go with uh, 10. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to go with 12 pixels right here. And that is it. I'm going to go ahead now and update. And let's see what it looks like. Let's uh, exit to the dashboard. Uh, let's click in here. Go to the home page. And there it is. So we're Travel Mints Adventure. And of course, we have the button right here that would link to our uh, booking.com. Home. But then how do we achieve this where you have the background basically blending into the uh, header? Jump in the very next video where I'll show you how to do that. So how do we now blend the homepage banner into our header? Well, just like what we have over here, what we're simply going to do here is this. Again, we're going to head back in here and let's edit the homepage header first of all. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to remove the black background. We no longer need it. So I'm going to go over to style and then simply click on the classic button again to basically reset it back to its default uh, background, which is just basically the white color. I'm going to update. All right, let's view the page. Let's go back to the home page proper. All right, now here I'm going to now edit the actual home page itself. So I'm going to click on edit with Elementor, the very first link up there. 
And now let me show you the power of negative margins. I'm going to edit this section holding the banner, come down here to advanced, unlink the values for the margins. And now I'm simply going to go all the way to negative 222 pixels. And there you go. <laughs> Just like that, we have been able to blend in the header with our homepage banner. Let me update. Let's view the page just to make sure. And there it is. That's our brand new uh, homepage banner and header just like that. So that's basically the power of adding our uh, negative margins. However, let me point out that this only works well on your desktop view. The thing is, if I was to go to the responsive view, you will see that the negative margins will begin to show and it's quite ugly. So down here where you have responsive mode, if I switch this one to tablet, it's still okay, kind of, although you can now see that the menu, the hamburger icon right here isn't looking that great. But then if you go to mobile, uh, it, it becomes really, really bad. You can see right now that you don't, the, uh, the logo basically, is with the text where travel meets uh, adventure and uh, you can barely even see the hamburger menu so we obviously are going to have to make several changes for the responsive design that'll be for later but for now desktop wise uh this looks pretty good so jump in the next video where i'll show you an alternative uh homepage banner all right, so as promised, I want to show you an alternative uh, homepage banner. It's not exactly a banner. It's more of a video. So you're going to have a video background uh, as opposed to the traditional uh, background image. So it's quite simple. This is the video I would like to add to the background. It's a video I made for myself, basically a compilation of some of my travels around uh, the world. So I'm going to go ahead and simply grab this uh, link right here. And we're going to edit this section. Now, because of the negative margins, you, you may not be able to see the edit section button up here. Uh, what you want to do is to simply use the navigator. Okay, so come down here, click on navigator, click on section, and now you can edit the section. So again, the navigator uh, button being very, very, very useful. We're going to go now to the uh, layout. Okay, I'm sorry, style rather. And then right here where you have background, we're going to go with the video. You click on video. And now in here, I'm going to paste the link to the YouTube video, but you can also paste a link uh, to from Vimeo uh, as well. And then you can choose the start time, the end time. You can choose to play once on mobile, enable the privacy mode. If you're gonna go with the background video, I would highly, highly recommend that you choose a background fallback. So for the background fallback, I'm simply going to use the uh, same image. The reason is because it's a video, sometimes it, it may not play. And because it's from YouTube, maybe YouTube has an issue or, you know, for one reason or the other, the video doesn't play. Uh, Elemental would use the background as a, a fallback option. So I'm gonna go ahead now and update. And uh, let's take a look at our page. Uh, come in here, refresh the page. And there you go. So now you can see we have the background video uh, now playing. And of course, I'm not going to deny that the videos aren't more powerful than an image. Obviously, videos are a lot more interesting. But please note that videos do have certain drawbacks, certain disadvantages, okay? It may slow down your website. So if you're going to use a video, please try to make sure that the video isn't that long maximum maybe 10 seconds because the longer the video is the longer it will take to load and that will slow down your website so please make the videos very 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 short make sure you add a background image as a fallback should in case uh the video doesn't load but that's the alternative for your home page but thank you for watching and of course i will see you in the next class Welcome back. So let's continue with building the home page. And as you can see, I've switched back to the traditional uh, background image. But like I said, you know, if you want to use the video, that's fine. The next section we're going to build out will be the two column section that will have some text on the left and the image on the right. And then the third section in here is very, very similar. It's just the columns reversed. So in the third section, we have the image on the left and then 
uh, the text on the right. So how exactly are we going to achieve this? This is very, very, very straightforward. We're going to go to our home page. Let's edit. And you can see right now it's basically two columns, 50-50. So very easily, we're going to come down here, create a new section with two columns, 50-50. I'm going to edit the section, make sure it goes full width. And then the columns gap, we're going to say no gap. All right. So the first section in here is going to have some text. So let me drop the text editor in here. Let me just quickly copy the lorem ipsum dummy text I have over here. Let me just go ahead and paste that. And then we also have the header. Let me drop that right there. It's an H2. And here, I didn't actually create any actual header, any like real title. So uh, let me just type in, you know, uh, we uh, love to travel, you know, just <laughs> just something. All right. So that's that. And then for the second column in here, we're going to add the image and I'm going to add this image I took in Istanbul. Uh, this were a group of uh, college students I was walking around and I said, hey, you know, would you like me to take a picture? They said yes, so I took the picture. So make sure you set this image to full because, again, we want the image to occupy the full width and height of its column. But then we also need to add the uh, learn more button. So what I'm going to do, of course, is to go back in here, drag button, drop it in here, and then I'm going to say uh, learn uh, learn more and then this link can go to maybe the about page so I'll just simply say forward slash about all right and uh, there it is I'm going to align to the center let's make some changes style typography I'm going to say transform to uppercase the decoration uh, none we don't want any decoration and then the text color I'm going to switch that to black. And now for the actual button itself, I'm going to go with a background color of white. So background type in here is going to be color white, but then we'll set a border of solid. So we can actually see the button. And if you want to, you could add some border radius as well, but uh, I'm not going to do that. One final thing to do would be to align our content in the middle. So I'm going to click on the edit column button, comment to vertical align, set to middle. And then, okay, one more thing. We do need to have some space on the left and right. As you can see right now, the text isn't exactly right up the edge of the column. So we need to add some space in. So I'm going to go back in here. So what we're going to do is very, very simply, we're going to go to advanced for the same uh, column. Right here, we're going to unlink the values for the pattern. And then I'm going to give 50 pixels. Uh, right 50 pixels on the left and there it is we have built out our second section so very easily since the third section is very very similar in design what we can do is to simply right click on the edit section button and then duplicate okay and now what I'll simply do is I'm going to drag this first column in here drag it all the way in here switch the columns and now, very simply, let's go ahead, edit this image. I'm going to choose this one, which I took in Argentina, Mount Fitz in El uh, Calafate. And then, of course, uh, for the text in here, uh, did I add anything? Travel to the best places is the header. Okay, so <laughs> let me just switch that header in here and say uh, travel to the best places. And there you go. All right, let's go ahead now, update. And let's see what the page looks like. Update, come on, let's go. Okay, do bear with me. Unfortunately, these are the occupational hazards of uh, an instructor or a teacher. <laughs> Sometimes the internet begins to uh, mess up and, okay, finally it's updated. Okay, thank you. Now, <laughs> let's view the page. All right, let's scroll down, and there it is. Okay, one more thing, just as a bonus, we could add some animation so that the images maybe like, you know, they're sliding from the left and right. So what we can do is to simply go back and check this out, okay? For the first image, the one with the students in here, I'm going to edit the image, go to advanced, 
Right here you have motion effects, I'm going to say entrance animation. Let's slide in from the right. Okay, so slide in from the right, so you know, slide in from the right. And then for this image, we'll simply do the opposite, slide in from the left. So motion effects, slide in from the left. And, uh, okay, that was kind of weird. I'm not sure exactly what I did. Let me just do that again. Okay, for some reason, the image went over to the second column. I don't know why that happened, but all right. I'll just go ahead, update. And uh, there we go. Let's view the page. Let's scroll down. Image sliding from the left, image sliding from the right. And there it is. And just like that, our home page is beginning to take effect. So... Join me in the next video where we'll now take a look at how we're going to build out the next section, which would be the our unique travel design. All right, so we're moving on, and the next section is going to be the our unique travel design section, which may look a little bit tricky, but it's not that tricky, all right? We basically have one very big section with multiple columns. Our uh, One column will hold the header, our unique travel design. We're going to have the divider element. We'll have some text and then we'll have an inner section element with three columns with uh, three different headings, diagrams and some text. So let's go ahead and edit the home page one more time. And I'm going to scroll all the way down here. And the first thing I'll just simply do is just to drag the header in here. And I will add the header that says uh, our unique our unique travel uh, design, okay? And of course, I'm going to align this one to the center. So since we now have content in our section, I'm gonna go ahead and edit the section, and we're gonna set the width to 1,240 pixels, okay? And then style, we're gonna add a background color of uh, F8, F8, F8. So it's this sort of um, grayish white color. I really don't know the exact uh, color, what it's called. But the point here is that I'm tr we're trying to differentiate uh, the section just above it from the uh, new section we're creating. So one of the best ways to differenti differentiate sections is by adding different uh, color uh, backgrounds. So in the travel design, I'm going to go back to advanced as well. Add some padding. So 50 pixels, top 50 pixels, bottom as well and uh, there it is so the next element will be the divider element which i'll drop just below our unique travel design we're going to align to the center and then the width here would be about let's go with 50 percent or maybe that's a bit too much how about 40 percent all right so 40 percent Next is going to be the text in here. Luxury is not about the stars. I actually stole this uh, text from <laughs> some website. I don't remember, but uh, I didn't come up with this um, <laughs> with this text. Okay, I'm, I'm not too. I'm not that smart. So I'm gonna drop the text editor just beneath the divider and paste that text right there. And of course, we're going to align it to the center. And then last but not least, we do have our three column section in here. So we're going to use the inner section and we're going to work smart again. Basically, each column has the exact same design. You have a diagram, you have a header, and then you have some text. So what we simply do is we'll design the very first column, drop our image in here. And it's the image with the uh, world plane kind of thing. This one right here. Insert that media. Make it a full size. And then we're going to add a header just beneath the image. We're going to make, make this one an H3. So I do have some text in here. And it's called, uh, this one is going to be featured uh, destinations. That would be the headline featured des destinations. And let's make a change, okay? I'm going to align to the center, but then for the style, we're going to change the typography from uppercase to uh, just normal, okay? All right, and then last but not least, we'll have the text editor. Let's drop that in there. So let me just grab this text right here. Similar, I'm ipsum, dummy text. Let's go ahead and paste that. I think it's actually the exact same text, if I'm silly me. Okay, well, <laughs> style, just align to the center. And uh, there it is. So what we simply need to do right now is to come in here, 
right click on the edit column button and simply duplicate and then duplicate one more time and then we'll come in here and delete the fourth column and there it is so we're just going to come in here right now change this image uh, to the one with the map and I do have the text in here that says uh, travel guides so in addition to being able to feature certain destinations to their customers uh, passport travel also offers uh, travel guides as well and then the last one in here I'm going to switch the image to the one with the plane ticket I do have the header here that says affordable affordable uh, tickets and there it is and there you go so I'm gonna go ahead now and simply update this and let's view the page and voila ionic travel design there you go so hopefully you enjoyed this particular lesson join me in the next one where we'll continue to build out our home page i'll see you then let's go ahead now and add the gallery to our home page now i know that in the demo site here you can see i created a uh, services section but i've decided not to do the same thing because it's actually very, very straightforward, and I don't want to waste too much time teaching you, you know, the same thing over and over again. Uh, basically, if you want to build out the same kind of section, you will have your white background, and you will have three columns. Okay, the first column here will hold the headline, our services. You will have the next column that will use the inner section element for the three columns, and then you can simply repeat that same section for the remaining three columns down here. Now, the element I used that has the image right here, the headline, uh, it's the info box, all right? You'll find it under your essential add-ons. So it's the one right here under essential add-ons, you will see info box, and it's the one right here. So you simply drag, drop it inside, and now here you can choose your image, you will add the title, the content in there, and so on. So you can think of this as an assignment if you want to build out a similar uh, structure but I'm gonna go ahead now and create our gallery instead so for the gallery it's actually not a gallery but more of an image carousel so I'm gonna go to general right here and then you see we have the image carousel right here click drag drop it inside and I'm gonna choose our images now I do have six images I have selected let me just take a quick glance at my other uh, screen right here so i have this image this image this image in here as well this one that's four uh, i also have this one from Chengrai and this one from barry loche okay let me go ahead now and create a gallery now the trick here is that all these images have the exact same height of uh, 800 pixels as you can see and also the width of 1200 pixels so whenever you're adding images to your gallery or carousel make sure or try to make sure that they are as close as possible in terms of dimensions they don't have to be exactly but they shouldn't differ by more than let's say five or ten pixels uh, give or take so try to make the images have the same size as much as possible so we're going to insert that into the gallery and we're going to choose the full size uh slides to show would be two at a time slides to scroll would also be two you don't want to stretch your images because this could lead to them being blurred so we'll keep that on no Navigation, arrows and dots, yes. Or you could just go with dots that will show uh, down here, which is also uh, possible. And then the link, you could link them to a media file if you want to, but I'm not going to link them. I'll just leave them or non. Uh, the caption, uh, we'll go with title, okay? So, so there'll be the titles of each image being displayed. And uh, there it is. All right, so I'm going to edit the section right now choose a full width and then columns gap no gap and there you go i'm gonna go ahead now simply update and let us view our page so i can scroll down here and uh there you go that is our gallery right there so one thing you could also do you could think of this as an assignment uh you could add the uh, button for Instagram so basically what you could do is again you go over here to edit with Elementor 
So if you have an Instagram page or an Instagram link, you could just simply come down in here. You know, you just drag your button, you know, you drop it right here and then just simply customize and say, view our pictures on Instagram. And then right here, you can add the link to Instagram uh, if you wanted to do that. So again, you do have the option to do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and delete. Uh, one more thing just to ensure is for your image carousel, all right, right here, you will have the additional options for autoplay, uh, pause on hover, pause on interaction. So pause on hover, you can choose no for that one, just to ensure that the images are always scrolling by. And of course, you, you, know, you can set your infinite loop, your direction may be left, or maybe go to right instead. You have all these options and it's really all very uh, subjective, okay? So I'm gonna stick with left, just update. And um, there it is. So that's it for adding our gallery. Join me in the next video where we'll now add our blog. I'll see you then. Let's go ahead now and add the blog section on our homepage. And you can see this is what we're trying to accomplish. We'll have our headline, a divider, and two blog posts, which will have the featured image, the title of the post, the excerpt, as well as the read more link, and then the read more post button that would actually link to the blog page. But here's the thing though, let me drag the same demo site right here, but with the back end, you will see I have access to certain elements in here like the post grid, as well as the post timeline. But if I was to go to my own site right here, and if I scroll down to the essential add-ons section, you will see that I don't have access to those elements and you will not see them either. That's because we need to activate them in the back end. What am I talking about? Let me first of all drag this page away. Let's go to the back end, the actual WordPress back end, and you'll see essential add ons in here. Go ahead, click on it. And now, right here where you have elements, you click in there, and right here, this is where you can activate or deactivate elements that uh, you're working with. So let's do this, okay? I will actually go ahead and disable every single element all right and i'll just activate a few the ones that we would probably use so i'm going to activate the testimonial element right here and then right here under your dynamic content elements i will activate the post grid as well as the post time line let's go ahead now save our settings okay now we go back to the home page edit with elementor and now if i scroll down to the essential add-ons section uh, you will see we now have uh, access to just a few of the elements. I'm not sure why we still why you can still see uh, better payment, uh, easy jobs, career pages, elements. I don't know why, but it's fine. At least now we have access to the post grid as well as the post timeline. So here's exactly what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna drag in our header, which would say visit our blog. So I'm going to drag the heading right here. So I'll say uh, visit our blog. Okay, let's align it to the center. Next up will be the divider. So let's add that one as well. Uh, I'm going to align to the center with very, very short width of about, let's say 20% should be fine. And now here's going to be the main thing. We're gonna go back we're going to make use of the post grid. Uh, post timeline, I'll show you how that works uh, when we build out the blog page. But I'm going to drag the post grid right here. And just underneath the divider, let's drop it in there. Okay. Now, post per page, I'm going to switch this one to two. Okay, so we only have two pages in here. And the thing is, you can source by maybe the author, you can also pick specifically by categories as well. So you simply come in here and type in the name of the category, whose post you want to show, and uh, so on. You can offset by maybe one post. You can order by the date, the sending, and so on. You have access to all uh, these settings. But the main one that I actually want us to work with is going to be the layout settings right here. So in here, you have just one template layout, which is the default lit, which is fine. But then the columns, we're gonna make this one two, okay? And now right here, the image size, we're gonna go with full, 
okay and there you go so now things are starting to look uh, a lot better but then of course we can also do things like the show uh, load more if you want to so when you activate this you'll see this button right here that will load more blog posts as well but we're not going to do that uh, you do have access to a grid style which there isn't that much of a difference with between grid and missionary. I guess when when you when you're showing more posts and you're working with more columns, uh, that's when you'll see the difference. But we'll just stick with uh, missionary for now. Okay, so show the title. Yes, we want to show the title. Uh, show the accept. Yes, but we're going to extend the accept to fifty uh, words. Okay, so there you go, fifty, and then fifty letters rather, and then in here the show with more button. Yes, we want to do that one show post terms we can show this this would be things like your uh tags your categories and so on but we're not going to do that one so we'll just go ahead and hide that now show meta this is going to be for the author the date it was published i'll go ahead and hide that but again of course this is entirely subjective you are more than welcome to display your meta information uh if you want to all right links right here you can do things like target blank for your images, uh, no follow. This would be for our uh, SEO purposes uh, and so on. All right, let's go over to style and let's see what we have in here. So the post grid style default, you've got style two, which would have the date. You've got style three here, which won't have the date, which is kind of similar to the default. I guess there isn't that much of a difference. And of course, in here, you can do things like change the post background color, add some more spacing if you want to. We're going to come down here to color, typography, and uh, style. So right here, when you hover on the title, you can see right here that it has this uh, color right here. We can simply just change that to black so there is no change. Okay, it's just basically uh, a link. It's not going to change, but again, very, very subjective. You can add a link right there if you want to. All right, title style. I'm going to come down here to typography. Uh, for the decoration... We can go with none, so it's not underlined, but again, entirely subjective. Our style, we can go with italic, but I'll just stick with the default. All right, that's for the typography. And then down here, where you have the hover cut style, right now, when you hover on the featured image, you have kind of like this animation, this fading animation, and then with the black background. So you can click in there, and this is where you can change the animation. So instead of fading in, you can do maybe like a zoom in where it zooms in or you can do a slide up so you can see that. And then, of course, you can change the background color as well. Maybe make it something less darkish, you know, so maybe something like this. You can also uh, change the icon that will be displayed. You have all these options uh, available uh, for you. But I'm just going to leave this as it is. Let me just change the color. Uh, back to something a bit darkish and yeah that's okay that's perfectly fine and uh that's it all right so last thing we're going to do is to simply add the read more post button so let's drag our button in here and i will say uh read uh more and now this link will go to the blog page so forward slash blog align to the center and uh, we're going to make some changes. Let's go to style. Uh, the background for the button will be the orange color. And then the text color, of course, would be uh, white. Uh, let's go to the typography, transform uppercase. And uh, let's actually say read more posts. Read more posts, I believe. Let me just take a look. Yeah, so it says read more posts. Okay. So read more posts and um, that's it. Let's go back to style again uh, for the typography. We're going to go back in here. Style, uh, decoration, none. So we don't have any uh, on the line button in there. And that's it. You can add your borders and do uh, other things as well. But I think this should be fine for now. So let's go ahead now. Update. And uh, that's it. So, you know, you're more than welcome to style this any way you want to. You don't necessarily have to use the exact same colors or the exact same text and so on. And uh, that's it. So one more thing, one more thing we should do before I round this up is to add some spacing uh, between the gallery section and our blog, as well as the blog and the footer. 
So let's go back real quick. And of course, we're going to edit this section for our blog and we're going to add some padding. All right. So let's go in here, edit section, go to advanced, unlink these values. So top, let's add 50 and then bottom, we're going to add 50. All right. And I think that should be enough. Let's go ahead, update one more time, view the page, scroll down. And that is it. So we've built out the blog page. Jump in the next video where we'll build out the deals and packages section. Let's go ahead and add the next section, which is going to be the deals and packages. And this will be very, very simple, very straightforward. We're going to make use of the call to action button for the essential add-ons. So please go to your essential add-ons back end and you would find the button in your marketing elements section. Go ahead and activate the call to action. Let's go ahead, save settings. And that's it. So I'm going to go back to my home page, refresh. And now let's scroll all the way down here. Let's actually, actually edit with Elementor first before scrolling down. All right, let's scroll all the way down here. And now I'm going to go to my essential add-ons. And where is our call to action button? It's right here, call to action. So I'm going to drop that in there. And it's very, very straightforward. All we're going to do right here is just to simply change the content style from basic to flex grid. So you now have the button uh, on the right and then the text on the left. And of course, we'll just simply change the title here to deals and uh, packages. Okay, deals and packages. I'm going to change this to an H3 with the orange text. You can, of course, change yours to white or black. And for the text right here, I'm sorry, I'm not going to provide any custom text. We'll just leave it as it is. And then the button text itself, uh, we can change that one. Uh, right here where you have primary button text, we'll simply change this one to uh, shop now. Shop now. And, uh, you know, this would link to an external site or maybe another page uh, on your site uh, as well. We're going to go over to style, all right, and then for style right here where you have the primary button style, I'm going to click in there. So what you want to do here is this, okay, right now when you hover on shop now, you can see that it changes to the blue color. Personally, I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go over to hover, okay, under your primary button style hover. Then right here where you have the background color, I'm simply going to just uh, change that one to orange. So now you can see it's orange and not the blue color. So we're trying to keep consistent with the color uh, pattern that we have on our site. That's the only change I am going to make. Let's go ahead now, update and let's view the page. Let's scroll down. And there it is, deals and packages. Now I know, of course, the we need some space in between the deals and packages as well as the footer, but we're still going to add the reviews uh, section. So that's where we'll add uh, the space in. So that's it for adding the deals and packages section. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. Last but not least, we're going to add the reviews section. And of course, this is very often a very important uh, part of any website because customers or potential customers want to know that other people have done business with your company and that they uh, liked your service. So we're going to go ahead and add our three reviews from Bjorn Anderson, Vanessa Carlton and Raul Gonzalez. Now, the thing is, because we've already activated the testimonial element with the essential add-ons uh, plugin, we do have two choices when it comes to adding uh, testimonials, okay? The free version of Elemental does provide you uh, with one. Uh, you would find it on the general. So on the general right here, you will see it. It's right here, testimonial, right next to tabs. But then with the essential add-ons, we also have the testimonial uh, element. So let me just show you briefly the difference with the one from the essential add-ons. You do have access to the rating button right here. So the style is a little bit different. You can see with the, this is the one from the uh, free version of Elemental. Here you can have the thumbnail or the avatar of the person providing the testimonial below the actual testimonial itself. But with the one for essential add-ons, it's a little bit different. But 
you do have access to the written button in here and uh, you can do several things like, you know, of course, you know, as usual, change the layout alignment, select, select your style, where you can even have things like uh, the testimonial here on top, you will have the icon and then the image. So you have all these options in here and it gives you way more options, okay, than the one provided by the free version of Elementor. But with that being said, I'm going to use the free version of Elementor just to get this exact same kind of uh, structure, okay? So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to remove the element and we'll add a header and we'll say reviews, uh, reviews from past customers. All right. And of course, we're going to align to the center and we're going to add our divider as usual. So let's add the divider. And I think this should be about 25. No, sorry, not not 25, but 45 percent. So 45 percent. And now we're going to add the inner section element because we're going to be working with three columns. So I'm going to drop that in there. So just like before, what we'll simply do here is that we'll provide the first testimonial from Beyond Anderson, and then we'll simply duplicate and then change the names as well as the location and uh, avatars for the rest of the testimonial. So very quickly, let's go over here, go to General, and let's add the first testimonial in here. Okay, and this is by uh, Beyond, Beyond Anderson. Now, for the title, uh, you could just add the country there instead, okay? So instead of the person's job title, you can simply add the country. So Bjorn Anderson is from Iceland. And uh, right here, I'm going to choose the image. And where is our friend Bjorn? Here he is. You can see he's all smiley, very, very happy. And uh, there it is. All right, so you can see the text size here is pretty small. So what we're going to do right here for the content is we're gonna go over to style, and then where you have typography in here, let's go ahead and then choose the typography button. Now for the size, we're gonna go with uh, 18 pixels. And there it is. And uh, what else? That's pretty much it. So we're gonna simply go ahead now and then duplicate this section, or rather this column, and duplicate one more time. Delete the last column. And then all we'll simply do in here right now is change uh, Bjorn Anderson to Vanessa Carlton. She too, she's smiling. She's very, very, very happy. Vanessa Carlton. And Vanessa is from the USA. All right. And then we have our last testimonial right here from Gonzalez, from Raul. He's, yeah, he's kind of not smiling exactly, but he's not angry either so Raul Gonzalez and he's from Spain Espanol how do you spell Spain Spain is S-P-A-I-N okay and uh, there it is we are done but one more thing let's add our padding to the section so advanced we're gonna go with 50 on top 50 bottom as well update and voila let's go ahead view the page and there you go right down there so that's pretty much how to add testimonials to your website thank you for watching and as always i will see you in the next class well welcome back felicitacion we have successfully built out our front page including the header and the footer and I hope you enjoyed the course uh, thus far. Now, moving on, we're going to build two more pages, the blog page and then the contact page. Now, I know that in the main menu, we do have the features page as well as the about page, but I'm not going to build those just to save time. I don't want to make this course way too long. And also because at this point, you already have an idea of how Elementor works. 
All that's left right now is just for you to imagine what you want your about page to be like. Do you want to have a big banner? Do you want to have a section with three columns? One column has an image, another one has some text, another one has a video. You can do all of that. So I'm going to challenge you to come up with creative ideas of building your own about page or featured page or any other kind of page you might be building on your own site. But we're going to build the blog page specifically because it's a little bit different from your traditional uh, static pages. The blog page contains all your posts. I'm going to show you the different ways how you can build the blog page and then the contact page will build because it does involve using a plugin called the WP Forms plugin, which many people don't know how to use. So hopefully, once again, I hope you're enjoying the course thus far. You have yourself a wonderful home page. Let's now progress to building out the rest of our pages. Let's continue. All right, so let's go ahead now and build out the blog page, which we've named the articles uh, page on the main menu, but it's actually the blog page. And the first thing we're going to do here is we can't edit with Elementor directly just yet because we actually need to edit the page first from the back end, from the traditional WordPress back end. Right here, we can now click on edit with Elementor. This will now give us access to the Elementor interface for the page. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to settings and simply hide the page title. And then we'll simply use our own heading and we'll call this one our blog. We're going to set it as an H1. Go to style. Actually, let's align to the center first. Go to style. And then for the typography, we're going to set it as our primary. So if you're not working with the uh, global fonts, you can set this to about maybe 60 pixels or something like that. Like make sure it's pretty big, right? Next, we're going to add our divider. All right. For the blog and uh, we'll align to the center. Set this at 30%. All right. And now check this out. Okay. We're going to add posts from different categories. We're going to make use of our post grid from the essential add-ons down here. Now you do have post timeline, which is actually very interesting. What this will do is that it will display your posts in a uh, vertical timeline and it is a different style. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it, but you do have this option if you want to, but uh, I'm not going to work with it. I'm simply going to use the uh, post grid. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead, drag the post grid, drop it just underneath the divider. And now look at this. OK, the source is going to be our posts, obviously, but we can query based on the author, the tags, formats and so on. But we're going to go with categories. OK, so here I'm going to type in Europe. All right. So we're going to pull in posts from Europe and the post per page here would be set to three. All right. And then the layout settings will go with three columns for the image size. We're going to go with full as usual. Now you would notice that because I'm using different uh, sizes of my images for the posts, there is a misalignment in terms of height. Like obviously the fashion in Istanbul has the taller image. Uh, and then, you know, for this in St. Petersburg and uh, Glasgow posts have shorter images. There is a way around this and you will see it right here. You have image height, so you can simply set a fixed height for your images. The only drawback to this is that sometimes you may not get the best angles. Like, for example, you know, if you made this one taller, then, you know, you may miss out on like the best uh, angle in your images and so on. So that's the only drawback. Ideally, you'd want to use images of the same uh, uh, width and height. Uh, when it comes to uh, featured images, but it's not a problem. It's okay. All right. So we've got that. What I'll simply do is let's add a heading to indicate that, okay, this is our posts from Europe. So I'm going to come in here and say uh, Europe. All right. Now let's make some changes to the actual post grid itself. So layout settings in here, the accept words, we're going to go with uh, 50. All right, uh, show read more. Yes, uh, show meta. Yes, but let's go over to style. And what I'll do here is I will select style number two. This one will show us the date. It won't show us the avatar or the, uh, the, the author's name. So I do prefer this particular style. 
Now, from on the style itself, we're going to go over to the color typography and spacing. Here, again, you have the title hover color. We did this earlier. I'm going to change this one to uh, orange. So when they hover on the post link, it turns to orange. And then for the typography, we're going to make some changes in here as well. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just so that Majestic City of Glasgow can be on one single line. Uh, the style, I'm going to go with italic, decoration, none. Okay. And uh, for the read more button, let's also change that one as well. I will find that one down here, read more button style. The text color, uh, we're going to go with orange just to keep things constant. And then, of course, for the typography, I'm going to click in here, go to decoration, and then set that one to none. And that's it. So we've set it up Europe. We've got our three posts. What I'll simply do right now is to simply duplicate Europe duplicate the post grid right here so i'll drag europe the second one drop it above here and then set this one to asia okay that's going to be the next category and now for the actual post grid itself we're going to change the categories in here to asia so let me type in a Asia, and there it is and there you go. And then last but not least, let's do the exact same thing again. Duplicate, duplicate. And now I'll drag Asia, change this one to South America. Come down here to the post grid, change this one to America. America, South America. And there it is. So the one more thing we could do is to add some spacing between the post grids. So check this out. Okay, I'll go to my post grid right here, the one for Europe. Go to advanced, unlink the values, and then I'll set bottom pattern of let's say 25 pixels, nothing too drastic. Uh, we'll do the same thing for Asia as well. Unlink, bottom 25 pixels and then last but not least we'll do for south america as well on link bottom 25 uh pixels let's go ahead now update and uh let us view the page and there it is okay so we're gonna add some spacing for the blog title itself but take a look at this okay this looks pretty neat and it's actually quite cool let me just quickly make that quick change to the blog title Let's add some spacing. So we're going to go, actually, we'll go to the section button right here, holding all the content. We'll go to advanced on link, and then we'll simply set 50 pixels for the top and then 50 pixels for the bottom uh, as well. Okay, update. Now, one more time, let's view the page. And voila, there you go. That is the blog page all built out. However, I want to challenge you to make things more interesting. I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. But with Elementor and with the Essential Add-ons uh, plugin, you have access to so many elements to make your pages look more exciting, more dynamic. As an example, okay, for the essential add-ons, I've activated uh, yet another element, and it is the uh, image accordion. You'll find it on the creative elements right here. You'll see image accordion. Go ahead, activate it. Now, let's go back to the page in here, and let me show you one thing we could do. I'm going to edit with Elementor, and we're going to make use of the image accordion. Now, check this out, okay? I'm going to scroll down here to our essential add-ons. We have the image accordion uh, element right here. I'm going to click drag and drop it just above Europe. All right. Now, before I begin to edit this, I'm going to add another heading just above the image accordion. And we can call this one uh, latest posts. Just as an example, uh, I'm actually going to add some padding from the top. All right, so let's go with 25 pixels just to give it some distance between the actual blog title and latest posts. And now take a look at this. Okay, I'm going to go to my image accordion 
And right here, we can do so many things. For the very first accordion in here, I'm going to click inside, change the image in here to be one of the posts. So this one right here, the St. Petersburg post, I'm going to choose the featured image, insert that. And now right here, you'll see make it active. Yes. But I want to make this accordion active so that it will actually link to the post. So in here right now, I'm going to change the title to uh, visiting uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, that's going to be the title. And then in here would be the uh, excerpt. Okay, this would be the excerpt for the text, which we can change. And now right here, where you have enable title link, you want to show this. And now right here, this is where you would add the link to the post. So let me just quickly do this. Let me view the page real quick. Uh, four days in St. Petersburg. So right here, I am going to grab this link right here. Again, notice you don't need to copy the domain name itself. Just go with the forward slash and then the name of the post, uh, the URL of the post. I'm going to copy this, go right here, go back to edit, click on the very first image accordion in here. And now down here, title link, I'm going to go ahead now and simply paste that. So this will now link to the post of uh, four days in St. Petersburg. Again, I could do the same thing for the second accordion in here as well. Uh, let's choose the one for the Rainbow Mountain. And then again, I can come in here and change the, the title to the Rainbow uh, Mountain uh, real quick, Rainbow Mountain and so on. That's for the second accordion. The third accordion, I'll just change this one to uh, the one for Rapa Nui. And then, of course, the last but not least, let's go with the one for uh, Turkey. Fashion, fashion in Istanbul, insert that one. And there it is. So I'm going to go ahead now, update. And now take a look at the improved uh, blog page. So now look at this, you've got blog, you've got latest posts, Vistance St. Petersburg, you'll have this Rainbow Mountain, they can click on this one for Rapa Nui, this one for, you know, fashion in Istanbul. And then if they're not interested, they can simply now scroll down to view the posts from Europe, uh, Asia, South America, and so on. So this is one way, another way how you can make your uh, pages more interactive, more dynamic. You can also add uh, animation as well like you know you can set it up so that you maybe slides in from the left or from the right I've shown you how to do that in the home page so just you know try to be creative if you're not happy with how static your page feels like you can always spice things up by making use of creative elements adding some animation and you'll see uh, uh, a, a massive improvement in how dynamic uh, your pages are. So that's it for building out the blog page. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next class. Alrighty, so we've built out the blog page and now let us build out another very important page and that's going to be the contact page. Now, ideally, of course, on your contact page, you want to have uh, some sort of contact form, uh, maybe even some Google map if you have a physical location. Uh, we don't have a physical location, but we're going to add a contact form. Now, there are several uh, plugins out there for creating contact forms. And in fact, if you're using the paid version of Elementor, you will have the form element. But we're using the, the free version of Elementor, so we're going to install uh, another plugin. And this plugin is called the WP Forms uh, plugin. So let me type in WP Forms. And it's the one right here. All right, so let's go ahead, install. And we're going to now activate uh, the plugin. And all right, so we're just going to go ahead and click on create your first form right here. And the good thing about this particular plugin is that it integrates very well uh, with Elementor. I'm going to type in our name right here. So that's going to be the contact form. That will be the name of this form. So contact form. All right. And now in here, you do have our different templates. Uh, we're going to choose the simple contact form. In fact, we can view the demo in here. You can see this is the demo right here. Very, very simple. You will have the name, email, and then message fields. So that should suit our purposes. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and simply click on use template. And um, that's it. So we're just going to make a few changes 
So the way the plugin works is that right here, you've got the fields available for you with the free version. There is a paid version where you have access to uh, these fancy fields and payment fields and so on, but we don't need them. So the change I'm going to make here would be to edit the name field. So I'm simply going to click inside and right here, you do have the format. I prefer the simple format where you just have one single line for the name, but you know, you have first, middle, last, and first, last, and so on. Under advanced, you can change the field size to large, to small, depending on your taste and what you prefer. You can add your CSS classes in here. You've also got Smart Logic, which, oops, I'm sorry about that. I forgot <laughs> this is only available uh, with the paid version. Anyway, for the field options, uh, that's it. So you can go back in here and add additional fields like a drop down, check boxes uh, if you uh, wanted to. On the setup in here, I'm sorry, on the settings rather, right here, this is where you can change things like the actual form name itself. You can change the text for the button. And then for notifications, this is where you can uh, set up the kinds of notifications you want to receive. So whenever anybody sends the or fills out the contact form, uh, we want to be notified so in here by default the admin email associated with your wordpress website will be in here but you can add your own custom uh, email and let me just show you something okay right here where you have from name by default it will be set to your website's name but it will make a lot more sense to set this to the actual name of the person sending the uh, message so right here click on show smart tags and simply choose the name field or your first name, last name, depending on the kind of uh, field that you have for the name. And then same for from email as well. We'll simply choose uh, the email field and uh, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and simply save. Uh, you do have the confirmations uh, in here as well. Like, okay, what happens once they filled out the contact form? Uh, do they get a message? If so, this is where you can edit the message. You can show them a particular page, maybe a special page you've created or you can simply redirect them to an external uh, URL if you wanted to but we're not going to do any of that let's go ahead now simply just save one more time close this and now we're going to go over to the contact page all right let's go ahead and edit the page first of all from the WordPress backend and then from here, I'm going to click on edit with Elementor so we can now use the Elementor interface and check this out. All right. Oops, I forgot to do one thing. My apologies. We need to enable the WP Forms uh, add-on for the Essential Add-ons plugin. So let's quickly do this. I'm going to go to Essential Add-ons in here. All right. And let's go to elements and then right down here you have the form styler elements you will see wp forms let's go ahead and now activate that you can see you have access to other kinds of forms like you know fluent forms gravity forms which is actually very very good ninja forms and so on anyways let's go ahead save our settings and all right i'm gonna close this let's refresh this page one more time and okay, so the thing about WP Forms is that even with the free version of Elementor, you will have access to the element once you've installed and activated the plugin. You can see it right here on the basic, you have WP Forms by Elementor. So I'm gonna click drag inside in here and I'll show you the difference between this one and the one provided by Essential Add-ons. Let's go back, scroll all the way down here. Let's add the one for Essential Add-ons into a different section and now you're going to see uh, the main difference okay this is the one for the essential add-ons i'm going to choose the contact form right here where it says select form let's choose that now right here compare this one with the one uh, up here let's go with the one for elemental first let's choose the contact form as well the thing is you only have access to the kind of form to choose, uh, the display options. Okay, do you want to show the form name, description, and then advanced. There's nothing more to it. However, for the one with essential add-ons, you have access to a lot more. You can show the description, labels, placeholder. 
you even have uh, error messages. Do you want to show error messages or do you want to hide them? So say, for example, if somebody didn't fill out the name field and then they pressed uh, submit, you want to display the error message or not. You have access to plenty of styling options. You can add a form background color. You can align the form, add your width margins. You have all sorts of styling options for the title and the description, labels, and so on. All these styling options, you don't get them with the one uh, with the element provided by the free version of Elementor. That's why I prefer to use the one provided by Essential Add-on. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one by Elementor. And let's just work on this one. Very, 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 very simple. We're not going to make any huge changes in here, except we will simply hide the uh, title of the form. Everybody knows it's a contact form, so uh, there is no need to change anything in here. Uh, one thing we will do though is to hide the page title and then we'll add our own heading. All right, and we'll simply choose this one as an H1, go to style, typography, choose primary, and we'll simply uh, call this one uh, contact us. And that's it. We'll add some padding to the section. Our link values, we're going to go with 50 on top and then uh, 50 below. And actually, come to think of it, the contact us is actually very, very large, but it's okay. Let's just align this one to the middle and we'll just add some padding for the actual uh, form itself. So I'm going to click on the form element. Let's go to advanced and we'll also add some padding as well just to give it some distance between the actual title and uh, the form itself. So go ahead now, update. And um, that's it. I'm going to go ahead now and view the page. And that's it for the uh, contact us page. Now, again, you can make this a bit more exciting. You can go with maybe two columns as opposed to one section. Uh, in the first column, you can add a an image of somebody maybe calling or somebody sending an email, stuff like that. So there are different ways to modify the contact us page and make it more exciting uh, if you wanted to. But this is very, very simple, very, very straightforward, and uh, it suits our purposes. So thank you for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next class. Alrighty, so technically we have finished building our website. We have the home page, we have the blog page, and we also have a contact page as well as the header and footer. But there is one very, very important thing that we need to take care of, and that is going to be responsive design. Always remember that so many people nowadays use their mobile phones to browse the internet. And if anybody stumble, stumbles across your website on their mobile phone, you want to make sure that it looks good. So what we're going to do in for the rest of this section is I'm going to show you how you can reconstruct the header, the homepage, the footer, and the other pages to look responsive so that if it's viewed on a tablet device or on a mobile device, it will look good. Let me just give you a very, very quick demonstration. Right now, this is for the tablet view. You can see I have reduced the size of my screen to that of a tablet. And you can see right now that it still looks very, very, very good. We don't have any issues with spacing. The header looks fine. Testimonial section looks fine. The footer looks fine. But now if I scroll all the way down to the smallest screen size, which will typically be your mobile phone, let me go back to the top. Now you can see that the header looks different. We have a black background. We do have our logo. We do have the main menu right here, which is now the hamburger menu, which you've seen many times before. And then if I scroll down again, you can see that it looks good all the way down here to the footer. So responsive design is extremely important. So coming up, I'm going to show you how you can make changes to your website so that it looks good on any uh, mobile device. Let me just also quickly mention that when it comes to responsive design, there are a few concepts you should be aware of. One would involve doing things like reducing margins or patterns that you've added in the desktop version. For example, remember that with the homepage banner for the section, we had to add an outrageous amount of negative margin. I think it was minus 222 pixels. So when it comes to mobile versions or responsive versions, you might have to reduce that size or maybe or maybe even in certain situations increase the size so adjustments to margins and patterns will be necessary also there are times when you just need to hide certain kinds of elements when viewed on a mobile device because it might look great 
on the desktop an example would be a video a video would look great on the desktop but on a mobile device it may not necessarily be that great same thing applies with animations as well animations would look good on, on the desktop they'll work well on, on the desktop but a mobile phone might have trouble displaying that animation so the whole point of responsive design is sacrifice you make changes you remove certain features so that when viewed on a mobile device uh it will be uh, it will be great so that's it for the very quick introduction to responsive design. Let's now get started with it. All right, so let's begin to design our header to be responsive. And let me just show you the state as it is right now. So desktop is pretty much done. Uh, when we begin to minimize the screen of our browser, you can see now that at this point, this would be like the tablet view. And you can see that the logo becomes a lot smaller. The menu has also transformed into the traditional uh, hamburger menu. And uh, it's okay, but it can definitely be, be improved. But then if we go a little bit smaller, now you can see this is where things look really, really bad. This is the mobile view, the one for the uh, mobile phone. So we need to make some changes in here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually before I do that, let me show you the other header, the global header. So let's go to the contact page and you will notice that this one is a little bit better. Uh, we have the black background and then on mobile view, even though the hamburger menu is misaligned with the logo, it's still much better because we don't have any uh, white uh, space at the top. All right, I'm going to go ahead and edit the home page header. So let's go to edit with Elementor and then home page header. Now we're going to switch to the responsive mode. So down here, responsive mode let's switch to tablet first now i want to show you something real quick all right let me go back to responsive yeah so by default your main menu or your featured menu in here will turn into the hamburger menu on tablet view however note that you don't always have to follow the default settings okay right now if i switch to tablet you can see it has turned to the hamburger menu and that's because if I was to click and edit the main menu, on the layout, you will see the responsive breakpoint, tablet. So screen sizes of 10, 25 pixels and below show the hamburger menu. But what if we don't want to do that? I'm going to switch this one to the mobile view instead. So a tablet view, we will still have the main menu showing and we only transform to the hamburger menu once we reach the mobile view. Let's go ahead, update, and let's see what this little, little change has done for us, all right? View the page, go back to the home page, all right, and okay, so now at this point, this is tablet view, and you can see that it's actually not that bad. You don't have to switch to the mobile, to the hamburger menu once it reaches tablet. Of course, if you had many uh, menu items, say, you know, six, seven, eight items, then yes, obviously you won't have enough uh, space. But in situations where you've got like four, five menu items, it's perfectly fine for you to display them as they are in the tablet uh, mode. So there's two changes I'm gonna do in here. One would be to increase the size of the logo just a little bit. And then we could also try to reduce the size of the menu items just a little bit. So let's do this real quick. I'm going to go back to the homepage header. And uh, we're going to switch to responsive tape tablet. All right. I'm going to click on the menu. Uh, I'm sorry, the logo rather here. Edit logo, go to style. Now notice right now that the dimension in here has been set to tablet. As you can see, it's all says tablet, tablet. So here I'm going to switch the size to 100%. So we're going to show the full size of the logo. And now for the main menu, I know it's all in white, you can't see, but just bear with me. I'm going to click on edit the main menu, go to style, and then we're going to go to typography right here. Now, watch this. Make sure the size here is set to tablet. We're going to make this one 14 pixels, just a little bit smaller than usual. Let's update. And now let's take a look at the new homepage header in responsive mode. And there you go. There you go. So up until this point, it's looking quite good. Obviously, we're going to make some major changes to the uh, banner headline, the, you know, where travel meets adventure. We're going to reduce the size, but just pay attention to the actual header. 
So, okay, it looks good up until the mobile view, which we'll now have to uh, work on. But for now, tablet-wise, this is looking quite good. Let's now take a look at the header for the global, the global header. Let's pick a page. Let's pick the articles page. And from here, we're going to go ahead to edit the global header. So we're going to handle the tablet uh, mode first. So let's come down here to responsive, uh, go to tablet. All right, we're going to handle the breakpoint. We're going to switch that on to mobile. And we'll just do the exact same thing for the style as well. Uh, we're going to align to the right for the main menu, alignment to the right, and then the style. We're going to come down here to typography. Make sure this is set to tablet. So we'll go with 14 pixels as well. And um, there it is. Okay. Next is going to be the logo. Let's not forget, we need to make the logo uh, 100%. Make sure this is set to tablet. So 100%, fine. And now we're going to switch to the mobile view. The only thing we need to do right here would be to align the navigation menu to the, uh, to the center. Actually, we shouldn't have touched the alignment in the tablet uh, mode, so it's okay. We'll just reset this back. So I'm going to go to content, uh, layout, and then the alignment here. Let's just keep it on the center. I think that will be uh, better. All right, that is it. I'm going to go ahead now, update, and let's take a look at what we have. Let's view the page. Uh, let's pick the articles page. Okay, reduce the size. What do we have in here? All right, so this is tablet. Tablet is looking good. And now here, this is going to be the mobile view, but there seems to be a misalignment with the logo and then the menu itself. So let's quickly fix that. Let's go back. We need to make the logo actually maybe a little bit smaller. I think it's a little bit too big as well. So let's make those changes. Go back to responsive, mobile. Okay, let's edit the logo first. Alignment here, let's set it to the center. Okay, let's set this one to the center. And then maybe the size, maybe 100% is a bit too large. Now that I think about it. So let's bring this down to 75%. Okay, let's go ahead, update. And let's see what this will look like. Let's go back, view the page. Uh, articles. Minimize. Okay, much better now. Now you can see the alignment is at the center. And there it is. So looking much better, much better right now. Of course, but we're still going to make some more, uh, a few more changes to the headers. But for now, at least, it's looking a lot better than what we had initially, both the homepage header and the global header are looking uh, better. We'll handle the white spacing uh, in the homepage header in the very next video. All right, so welcome to part two of redesigning the responsive header. And I forgot to mention in a previous video, when I changed the size of the menu items in here, uh, for some reason, it seemed to have affected the desktop version. You can see right now that the text are no longer uppercase. So if something like this happens, just simply go back to uh, editing the homepage header. And what you want to do is just simply to go to the uh, menu element. So I'm going to click on the menu element right here. I'll go to style, go to typography right here, and just click on it. That's all. You can see right here, it says transform to uppercase. So we're basically just reaffirming that, hey, we do want the uh, let us to be uppercase. So I'm going to go ahead, update again, and let's just go back, view the page. And uh, let's go to the home page. Okay, and there you go. So uh, honestly, I'm not quite sure why that happens, but just in case it does happen to you, just simply uh, do what I just did. Okay, now, previously, we were able to get the uh, the, the tablet view to look like this, which isn't bad at all. But now it is time for us to take a look at the mobile view. And you can see right now it looks really, really bad. There's plenty of white space. And uh, the logo and the menu, the hamburger menu are kind of aligned, but uh, we do need to fix the white space. Now, actually, this is the second time I am recording this particular video because in the previous one, I actually was able to fix the mobile header to have the exact same kind of style where you will have uh, the banner blending into the background. However, I have decided to go with a different route 
and instead use the same kind of header we have for the rest of the pages like the one here where you have the black background i've decided to use this header for the home page uh, header and mobile view and the reason why is because i actually wanted to use this opportunity to, to show you uh, a very cool trick that you can use whenever you're working with responsive design let's go back to the home page okay and i want to show you something all right i'm going to go to edit with Elementor, we're editing the homepage header. Now here's the thing, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this header section, okay? So I'm gonna right click in here, duplicate. So basically now we have two headers. The difference is, I'm gonna come in here, go to this edit section, and I'm gonna go to style, background type, give it the color of black. <laughs> okay, now check this out. I'm going to go to advanced, come down here to responsive, and then right here you have visibility options. When exactly would you like to show this section based on the screen size? Are we going to hide it on desktop? Yes. We don't want to show this on the desktop yet because we're still using the homepage header. On tablet, we also want to hide it on tablet, but then we want to show it when it gets to the mobile view. As such, I am now going to go to our original header and do the opposite, go to advanced, come down here to responsive, and then hide on desktop. No, we wanna show, we wanna show on tablet, but we're now going to hide on mobile. Let me go ahead now, update, and take a look at this, okay? Let's go ahead now, view the page. Uh, let's go to the home page. And okay, so you can see we still have the same header, but now uh, for the tablet view, you can see we still have the same header, the same header, the same header. But now once it gets to the mobile view, we now have the black background with the logo right there in the center and then the hamburger menu down there. And then we have the homepage banner and there you go. So this is one trick that you can use whenever you're working with responsive design. You can choose to show a particular section specifically on desktop, and you can choose to show a particular section specifically only maybe on tablet or on mobile. A question I might have here though is, okay, why didn't I just simply uh, duplicate this particular header and then simply use that header on the home page and then simply hide it on desktop and tablet and then display it on mobile. You can't have two headers being displayed on any page with Elementor. At least that's how this plugin works. Okay, so if you were thinking of just simply duplicating this header and showing two headers on the same page, hide one on desktop, show the other one on mobile, it's not gonna work because I actually tried it. That's why I had to go to the homepage header and then on that same header, create a second section which we now we display specifically on the mobile view. But we're not done. I actually want to do something else. See, you don't always have to go with this format where you have the logo and the center on top and then the hamburger menu are below it. We can still use two columns here, have the logo on the left and have the menu on the right. Let's do that. So I'm going to go back, edit with Elementor, the homepage header. Okay. And let's wait for this page to load. Okay, so I'm editing the second header right now, but I'm gonna switch now to responsive mode. Let's go to the mobile view. Okay, and here's exactly what we have. All right, so right here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna click on the column holding the logo. Right here, I'm gonna say 50. And then I'll come down here to the logo, column holding the logo, I'm sorry, holding the menu rather and then change that one to 50 as well, so that they are side by side. Now, let's make some changes. I'm gonna click on the edit menu icon, come down here to layout, let's stretch our line to the right, and then we're gonna make it big. Let's go over to style. Down here, you will have the menu trigger and close icon, click inside, and now icon size, I'm gonna make this one about 40 pixels. Okay, that should be big enough. And then for the logo, let's edit the logo as well. 
image size is set to full align to the left let's go to style max with 100 percent okay let's go ahead now update actually before we update let's also let's also do this see when you click on the hamburger menu this is going to be the drop down but you can see right now that we can't see the text the text is all white so we need to make some changes in here so here's exactly what i'm going to do okay i'm going to go to drop down on the sign drop down right here and then background color we're going to go with black text color we're going to go with white and that should be that i don't know why we don't see it here yet but it's okay i'm going to go ahead update let's go back view the page okay go back to the home page minimize the window all right so now you can see okay we've got the logo on the left the menu on the right now if you click on the menu right here it opens up but we still can't see the text that is interesting okay let's go back and see what might have happened and uh yeah this is going to be very interesting i'm not quite sure why we don't see the text all right no worries, I'm going to come in here to responsive mode, switch back to mobile, click on the menu right here, click on the drop down. Why don't we see the text? Uh, let's go to style. Uh, let's come down here to typography and wow. Okay, uh, I'm not entirely sure why <laughs> the size here is set to one, but it shouldn't be one. It should be a little bit bigger than one. I'd say probably 14 pixels. So my apologies. I'm not entirely sure why <laughs> it gave me one pixel. Sometimes I feel Element is trying to prevent me from making uh, good videos. I, I honestly don't know why it said one pixel. That's just that's just bizarre. Okay. Anyways, now you can see that at least the uh, menu items are now showing. Wow, that's very very interesting. I'm telling you, web design can be a very strange. Uh, a very strange occupation sometimes you know you feel you feel like all these elements have a mind of their own okay so <laughs> let me just go back all right so now i click in here okay so there you go so now you can see we have got the menu items and of course you can now uh close so that's uh basically it for redesigning the responsive header i'm actually going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for the global header for the mobile view where i'll make the first column 50 percent and then make the second column holding the menu item 50% uh, as well. And also make the uh, menu hamburger icon a little bit bigger. So you can go ahead and do that as well. But that's it for creating the responsive uh, headers for the website. Thank you for watching. Jump in the next video where we'll now take a look at uh, redesigning the footer to be uh, a bit more uh, responsive. I'll see you then. So now let's take a look at the footer and try to make it responsive. And uh, let me go over to the tablet view first. And from here, it actually still looks pretty good. I don't think we need to make any changes in the tablet view. But once we get to the mobile view, this is where we have a bit of a spacing issue. You can see the contact heading is a bit too uh, close to the image. And if we go really small, then it's the same thing except the image right now looks very, very blurred. So perhaps the best option for us on the mobile view would just be to simply remove uh, this image. Let's go ahead and edit with Elementor the global footer. All right, I'm going to switch to responsive tablet first of all, just to confirm. All right, so responsive mode, let's go to tablet. So yeah, so tablet looks fine. It, 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 look, it looks fine. I don't think we need to change anything except maybe actually, you know what? From the tablet view, the image is already looking kind of blurry. That's because it's a bit too tall. So what we can do is this. We can reduce the size of the first column and increase the one of the second column. So let's see what 50 uh, will do. So it's 50 and then uh, the one on the right as well is going to be 50. But the image is still a little bit blurred, so that's not that great. All right, let's go back in here. Let's try to make some adjustments. Maybe make this one, let's say, 66. I think 66 is fine. And then we'll simply make the second column uh, 33 so that it could be on the same line. Okay, this is still fine, I guess, okay? 
but what about the mobile view okay now you can see that the image is just way too blurred and sometimes it's best to just remove and not show uh, certain kinds of elements uh, in the mobile view so what we simply do here is this okay we're gonna click on the column edit column we'll go to advanced and just like we did previously we're going to uh, hide on mobile and that's it so let's go ahead now update and let's take a look at what we're gonna have let's view the page go to the home page okay let's scroll down and okay so the only thing we need to do right now is to add some padding for the contact heading let me just go back to the uh, go back to the tablet view just to confirm that it's okay so yeah tablet view is, is, is fine it's the mobile view where we're going to need to add some space in with the contact uh, button so let's quickly do this we're going to go back edit with elementor global footer and we'll just add some padding to the to the footer itself that's what we'll simply do all right let's go to responsive mode mobile and okay so we're going to edit the section right here edit in a section advanced and we'll just add some padding okay so padding from the top 25 pixels should be reasonable oh sorry not from the top but but uh actually from the top yes from the top <laughs> sorry i'm going ahead update let's view the page um page minimize scroll down and that is it so now the footer looks much much better okay so join me in the very next video where we'll now take a look at making the home page responsive and in particular the home page banner all right so let's take a look at making the home page responsive and for the most part it's actually not that bad this is for the uh, tablet view obviously we can make the uh, headline a little bit smaller make the banner also a little bit uh, shorter in height and right here of course we can add some padding to the beloved to travel section as well as the travel to best places section as well but i think that's all we need to do because the rest is actually quite good the unique travel design section looks fine the gallery is fine the visitor blog section is fine deals and packages reviews all fine however for the mobile view which is what we have right here obviously we're going to have to make the text much 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 smaller as you can see and also add padding in here as well for the travel section and uh, we need to do something about the fact that we do have the two uh, images for the uh, second section lining up next to each other ideally it should be uh, we'll love to travel and then this image and then uh, travel to the best places and then the image of this uh, mountain so we're gonna have to do something about that as well uh, other than that the rest of the page looks quite good you can see the gallery is now one single uh, row which is fine uh, the blog section is also one single uh, row as well and uh, other two two rows I'm sorry and then deals and packages reviews are all now in their own separate uh, column in their own separate row as you can see and uh, that's it all right so let's go ahead and begin to make the changes so let's edit with Elementor we're gonna handle the banner first because that's the uh, that's the main that's the main uh, issue all right responsive tablet okay what do we have here we're gonna go ahead now and edit the text and on the desktop it was about 120 pixels as you can see so we're gonna have to break, break this down just a little bit much smaller so let's say 88 pixels right but don't forget that we set a height for the section so let's go over to the section right now and when we have the minimum height here we're going to reduce this as much as we can don't worry about the text overlapping the header for now but let's try to give it a reasonable height for the tablet i think 590 might be a bit too small uh let's let's say 700 right 
700 seems fine enough. And then from here, don't forget that we also give it negative margins as well. So now that we've, we've reduced the size from uh, 1000 to 700, we might as well also go to advanced. And then right here, don't be fooled by the fact that you don't see anything inside the margin boxes. It's actually inheriting the margins from the uh, from the desktop view. So here, let's go ahead now and try to reduce this. Oh, sorry, we forgot to unlink. Let's make this one uh, zero. All right, I'm going to keep on going up again. And this should be about, let, let me just give it uh, 150. Uh, minus, okay, I can't do that. Let me just try this. Minus 150. Okay, I think that's a bit too much. Let's go down. Let's go down. Okay, so it should be around 123. Let's just make it 125. Okay, so 125 pixels. And now for the text itself, for the header, we could make this a little bit smaller again. And uh, that's it. What do you think? I think this is fine. 80 pixels for the header. And we've reduced the height of the section to 700 pixels. Reduced the negative margin as well. And uh, yeah, I think this is fine. Although, be careful. Do you see right now that if we expanded the tablet to the maximum screen size, you can see we now have the white space showing up. So that should tell us right now that, okay, hold on a second. We need to increase the negative margins actually. So that's another thing you should be aware of whenever you're applying negative margins in responsive mode. Make sure you apply your negative margins to the biggest screen size possible. So this is the biggest screen size possible for the tablet view at uh, 1024 by 878. So we're going to increase, or rather in this case, reduce the negative margin because when you are negative we are reducing and that is so 158 just about does it so now if we bring this down to the smallest size for tablet you are still not going to see any white space and that's that okay i think this is fine for the tablet Let's now make some changes to the first or like the second section in this case right now. So what do we need to do? For the tablet, we can add some padding. All right. So we're going to go in here, edit section. Let's go to advanced. And right here, let's just add some padding. We can go with the usual 25 pixels and then 25 pixels for the bottom as well. Let's scroll down here. We'll do the exact same thing in here as well. I'm going to show you something really, 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 really cool. Uh, 25 pixels from the top and then 25 pixels from the bottom as well. All right. Now, if you look at this, you'll realize that it actually doesn't look that great. I mean, you've got an image right here, but the text, the text column is a little bit too large. It's a, bit, it's, it's a little bit too tall. Uh, same goes with the second uh, section as well. So what exactly can we do? The simplest thing we could do would be to simply make each column go 100% in width. So that instead of having two columns, we'll have uh, two columns side by side, we'll have two columns on top of each other. So as an example, right here, if I gave this first column in here, we're just gonna give this one uh, 100. All right, 100. And then we're gonna give this column also uh, 100 and there it is all right now even if we expand to the biggest possible size on a tablet I think it looks okay this looks fine on a table just make sure the images are large enough so one change we'll just need to do right here would be to add some padding to this learn more button so I'm gonna click in there go to advanced padding and then we'll just add at the bottom okay we'll add some padding in here uh, let me see, 25 pixels might be a little bit too much in this case. Maybe 15 pixels. Okay, 15 pixels is fine. And there it is. Okay, let's do the exact same, same thing here as well. So I'm going to click on this column right here. And then go to uh, the column width. I'm going to give it 100. And then the second column in here as well, 100. Okay, and then... Take a look at this. Ideally, we want to have this column right here 
on top of this column. So how do we do that? What we're going to do is to simply go to this section, hold in these two columns, go to section, go over here to advanced, and then right here on the responsive, you're going to see this option to reverse the columns. We're going to do that on tablet and we're going to do that on mobile as well. Now you can see that the travel to best places column is now on top of the mountain. And that's exactly how to do that. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and add some padding to the learn more button in here. Uh, padding at the bottom, 25, 15 pixels. I believe it was. And there it is. Okay. So let's go back on top, scroll down. Okay, we got plenty of spacing. All righty. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Now let's try to reduce the size to the smallest and see if there's anything we need to do in here. Mm. Nope. Looks okay. It looks perfectly fine. And there it is. Okay. So that's it for the tablet uh, view. What about the mobile view? Let's switch to mobile. Okay. All right. So obviously the banner in here, we'll need to <laughs> fix that one. But I'm just quickly scroll down in here and see the rest of the page. So the rest of the page looks actually quite good. Yep. This looks good. Everything is now in one single column itch. Uh, the reviews in one column and then the contact page. Okay. So all we need to do right now would be to handle the banner. So let's do this. Okay. I'm going to scroll up here. Uh, let's go over to the section. All right. The first thing we'll do right now is for the height. All right. So minimum height, 700 pixels. This is of course inherited from the tablet view. Let's see if we can actually maybe increase the size a little bit actually. Okay, uh, I think 879. Let's try to get something a little bit even, like 870 pixels maybe. Okay, let's try to increase the size a little bit to the largest size for the mobile view. Now, you would notice there's, there's a little bit too much of a negative margin because you can see the blue line and you can see the logo uh, showing up above. So, what we're going to have to do right now is to, to go to advanced. And then for the negative margins, let's try to actually, we don't need any, neg any negative margins. Actually, we're just, we're just, we're just going to make it zero. But yeah, let's just make it zero since we have a black background anyway. So we'll just make that one zero. So this is for mobile. All right. So from here, let's reduce the height. We're going to reduce the height of the page now of the banner rather to something reasonable. Let's see. I think 535. What about 530? Yep. I think this is fine. 530 looks fine. Scroll down. Okay. Yeah. I think it should be fine. Let's make it now very small and see. Okay. So the text can become, is a bit too large actually. So let's do this. I'm going to go over to edit the heading typography. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make this as small as we can. And now if we expand to the largest for the mobile view, what you have here is okay. So this brings us to a new discussion. See, the thing is right here at the largest size for mobile, the text is a little bit too small. So if we try to increase the size here, so it looks good on the highest possible uh, screen size for the mobile. The issue right now is that if we reduce the screen size, so the smallest possible size for mobile, now the text is a bit too large. What you can do in this kind of scenario is to switch the style size unit from pixels to the view port, right? The view, the VW option in here. The VW is the viewport width. What this will try to do is it will try to adjust the size of the text based on the width of the screen size. So check this out. Okay, I'm going to go switch over now to VW 
and let's try to go with the size of 10 for the highest. Okay, so this is at the highest size, screen size for mobile. And then if we reduce the size up onto the smallest, you can see that the text is actually also reducing as we reduce the size of the screen. So that's one tip I can give you right now. Just simply switch to VW as opposed to our pixels. Okay, so perhaps maybe one little thing we could do, one final thing we could do, again, would be to reduce the height a little bit further to let's say 450 pixels. That should be the last change. Let's try to make this one smaller. And there you go. Okay, I think this is this is fine. This is fine at this point. All right. There you go. Let's just scroll down, see what else we can do. Nah, that's pretty much it. I think we're, we're fine. Let me just make this one really small. Everything is in one column. And there it is. Okay. One last thing, last thing we could do is maybe reduce the size of the button here just a little bit. So let's go ahead, edit the button. And right here, we're going to go to style. Actually, we're going to go to style. And then for the typography right here, let's click in there. So size, make sure, of course, this is set to mobile. And then we'll just go ahead and maybe make this one, uh, let's see, 14 pixels maybe. 14 pixels. Uh, what else can we change? We can, of course, change the border radius as well. So let's bring this one down to, let's say, 5 pixels. And uh, there it is. Okay. Now, here, we could try to make the size... Uh, too small. Uh, I actually haven't tested this. I'm not sure if this would affect the tablet view. Uh, yes, it's going to affect the tablet view and even the desktop view. It will always be small. So this is up to you. You could decide to just make make, make the button small all across all three uh, screen sizes or you could just go with uh, medium. I think medium will be fine for uh, mobile. All right, that's it. I'm going to go ahead now update and uh, there it is. We have successfully built out the responsive uh, homepage. Thank you for watching, and of course, I will see you in the next class. So that's it. We've officially come to the end of this first section where we've built out a fully functional and responsive website by making use of the free version of Elementor. So if this is where you are stopping, let me say thank you so much. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch my course on how to work with the free version of Elementor. And also, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Please do give me a follow on Instagram as well. And uh, let me just wish you all the very best in your Elementor adventures. But if you're interested in sticking around and learning how to work with the paid version, the much more powerful paid version of Elementor, I will see you in the very next video. All right, so welcome to section two, where we're going to be working with the paid version of Elementor and thank you so much for sticking around and just as a very gentle reminder if you're going to work with Elementor Pro and you'd like to buy Elementor Pro I will have my affiliate link in the box below. Now obviously I do want you to to uh, pay for Elementor Pro so I can make some money but I'm not just saying that so I can make money I'm actually saying this because working with Elementor Pro is so much better than working with the free version of Elementor. And right here on the home page of Elementor on their pricing page, it costs for nine dollars for one line sense. And then if you want for 25 websites, it costs uh, about two hundred dollars a year. I don't think you're going to need the one hundred ninety nine dollars subscription for 25 websites, unless, of course, you're an agency and you're building websites for multiple customers. But if you're an individual and maybe you have one website or two websites, even if it's two websites, that's roughly about one hundred dollars for a year which in my humble opinion is still worth it because you're going to get access to so much more than the, uh, the the free version of Elementor. Right here, you can see the additional features you get. You will have access to uh, 60 Pro widgets. You will have access to 300 plus professional templates, which you can use to build websites very, very, very quickly. You will have access to the pop-up builder, the form builder, and even the WooCommerce builder. So if you like to integrate WooCommerce into your website, maybe you want to sell products or services, 
uh, you can do that with Elementor Pro as well. And another advantage of Elementor Pro over the free version of Elementor is that you're not you're no longer going to need uh, additional plugins like the header footer builder plugin, essential add-ons, or WP forms because the paid version of Elementor has all of these. And it's always much better to manage one single plugin than manage uh, multiple plugins. And that's pretty much it. So coming up in this section, we're going to work with Elementor Pro. We're going to rebuild the header both for the desktop and then responsive designs. I'll show you how you can make use of the professional uh, pro templates and elements provided by Elementor Pro. And best of all, I'm actually going to show you how you can build the template for the single posts so that you can control how your posts uh, look like when they're being uh, viewed. This is something that you cannot do with the free version of Elementor. I just want to remind you also that on my YouTube channel, I do have tons, tons of tutorials uh, that will show you how to work with different aspects of Elementor Pro. You can check out the playlist, Elementor playlist, everything is right there. But I also do have a professional course on Elementor, both on Udemy and on my own personal website, the webmonkeyacademy.com. On my own platform, I will be offering a $10 discount for the first 100 people who sign up. You will have the link in the box below. It's usually $20, but I'll bring it down to $10 or $9.99 uh, if you're interested. I could offer the exact same on Udemy as well, but Udemy no longer allows uh, you know coupons to last more than five days. So I can't really provide you that kind of pricing on Udemy. But just as an example, when it comes to the curriculum, I cover just about everything for Elementor Pro. I'll show you how you can work with different kinds of widgets, the global widgets, the pop-up builder, building a post template, working with the icon library, how you can work with the table of contents, how to integrate Rank Math as your plugin with Elementor, how to work with the uh, advanced custom fields, the tilt effect, position property, and so much more. So if you really want to delve deeply into Elementor Pro and learn how to use Elementor to its fullest capabilities, please do consider signing up for my course uh, either on Udemy or on my own personal website, thewebmonkeyacademy.com. Again, I'll have all the links uh, in the box for you below. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with Elementor Pro. All right, so let's start working with Elementor Pro by rebuilding our header and I'll show you how templates work uh, with Elementor Pro. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the back end and let's go ahead and deactivate the Elementor header and footer builder. We no longer need that. So I'm going to deactivate and let's just take a look at the non-existent header that we don't have anymore. And of course, uh, no footer. Now you can still see the uh, when travel meets adventure and then the copyright text in here. This is the hello theme uh, displaying uh, these uh, footer for us. All right. Let's go back in here and once you've installed and activated Elementor Pro, uh, you will see right here where you have uh, templates on the Ele Elementor, you will see the theme builder. So go ahead, click in here. And right now you can see the different kinds of templates we can build. We're going to build out the header. So I'm going to click on plus to add the header. And the good thing about Elementor Pro is that you'll have access to a very wide variety of templates that you can use. So you can see them right here, different styles for the header. You can see some, you know, you'll have like the logo on the left, the social media icons on the right, the main menu below. So you, you can just quickly insert any one of these templates that closely match the kind of design that you want. But I'm gonna go ahead and simply build ours from scratch because I'm, I wanna show you how uh, this works with the Elemental Pro Elements. So I'm gonna close this and we're simply gonna rebuild just like before. I'm going to come in here right now, create our two column section, one that will be about 30%, the other one about 70%. And now if I go over here to the Elementor back end, right now you can see we have the site logo right here. So I'm going to drag that one, drop it inside. And now the thing is, you might notice a change with the Elementor Pro uh, logo element. And that is the fact that you actually have access to the height of the logo are on that style. With the logo element provided by the Elemental Head and Footer Builder plugin, you don't have these options. So you can actually control the height of the logo from here. But we're not gonna touch that just yet. I'm gonna go over to the backend again, choose the nav menu element right here, 
drop it inside here and of course main menu will choose let's align to the right uh break point we're gonna set this one to mobile remember uh let's go over to style uh typography we'll make this one uh upper case let's go back to the main section itself holding both columns let's make it full width and uh for the logo let me just go ahead and add a black background so at least temporarily we can see the logo okay so much too large let's go back in here and uh for the max width we'll just go ahead and choose uh 75 percent just like we did previously no need to, to use the height in this case uh one more change let's align the menu items vertical align them to the middle and uh there you go and of course the color as well i forgot about that let's change the color text color to primary and uh that is that now take a look at this okay down here you have publish when you hit publish this is where elementor pro will now say hey where would you like to display this particular template we're going to add the condition not the entire set because this is going to be for the home page so i'm going to come in here right now and choose singular and then for singular, it will say, okay, all single pages, no. We want to display specifically on the front page. So I'm going to choose that one. And uh, that is it. I'm going to go ahead and now simply save and close. And uh, that is it. Let's go ahead now and refresh. And I'm going to show you something very, very, very interesting. All right, let me do a hard refresh. Okay, so here's the thing, all right? You can see that we do have the menu items right here showing up. Oh, by the way, the uh, hover effect that you can see, the dash appearing under each menu item, that's provided by Elementor Pro uh, menu, menu element by default. So you can change that on the hover effect if you want to. But the main issue here, here right now is that we no longer see the logo, right? We can see the menu items, but we don't see the logo what is happening here this is where i would like to introduce to you the concept of the z index now let's go back in here let me first of all remove the background color all right for the header we no longer need that but take a look at this i'm going to go over to advanced right here you have this little 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 option but very 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 important very powerful called the z index and i'm going to give this one a value of two okay update let's go back in here let's do a very hard refresh and just like that <laughs> now you can see the logo appearing but hold on a second what exactly just happened see this z index value right here Whenever you have one element uh, or one section overlapping another section, you might want to be able to tell Elementor which of those elements you want to show first. Basically, which one do you want to bring in front of the other? In this case right now, we do have the banner image overlapping our header, but we want the header to be in front so we can see the logo and the main menu. As such, you will have to give a higher Z index number to the element that you want to appear in front. Since we've given the header, the Z index value of two, and let me actually go to the section holding our banner. So let me edit with Elementor. Let's go to the navigator section right here, advanced. You can see right here that we don't have any value for the Z index for the section holding the banner. But if I came in here right now and I give it a value of three, now you can see we no longer see the logo, we no longer see the main menu either. That's because the Z index value of the section holding the banner is now greater than two. So, but if I give it one, now you can see we have the main menu and the logo. That's exactly how the Z index works. Now, a question you might have, and a very good question is, Alex, Hold on a second. Before we gave the value of this index of two to the header, how come we still saw the main menu, but we didn't see the logo? I will be 100% honest with you. I'm not exactly sure why 
that happened. I'm guessing maybe there is some code within Elementor that always gives priority to the main menu to always show. Again, it might be something very, very simple that I'm simply missing. I'm not entirely sure and I do apologize for that, but I'd like to be honest with you. But just take it for what it is. Whenever you run into this kind of situation where you have one element overlapping the other and you want that other element behind to show in front, simply give it a higher uh, Z index value. One thing you may have noticed is the sudden white space that's now appearing right here at the very top. And this happens because Elementor by default in many instances will add a pattern of 10 pixels around their element. So one way to bypass this kind of uh, issue is to simply edit the section that has the white space. In this case right now, it's my header. So uh, let me go ahead, edit the elemental header. And we're gonna go to the section itself. So edit section and then right here where you have the columns gap, I'm gonna say no gap. All right, no gap at all. Let's update. So basically by saying no gap, we're saying, hey, we don't want any patterns anywhere. Now, this will get rid of the white space, but now notice because we've said no, no gaps at all, now the column holding our logo no longer has any padding between the logo and the top of our screen. So very simply, just go to the column holding the logo, go to advanced, padding right here. We'll just give it, say, 10 pixels of padding at the top update and that will solve the issue uh, instantly. So these are some of the very uh, little annoying issues you might run into when using Elemental and how to uh, bypass them. We're almost done. Let's go ahead and create the mobile header for our header and uh, for the front page rather. And it's the exact same thing that we did previously. Uh, we're gonna come in here right now, duplicate the entire section. Uh, let's come, out, come down here to the mobile header, edit the section. We're going to go to style, classic, color of black, okay? And then uh, what, do we need, what else do we need to do? We need to switch to the responsive mode. Uh, go to mobile. And now right here, edit column, we're going to say 50%. Uh, do the same thing for the column holding the main menu. And then say 50%. Uh, we can edit the menu right here, align to the right. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. So let's go to style. Uh, come down here to the toggle button. The size, make it a little bit big. Uh, for the logo as well, go to style. Max width, 100%. And uh, yeah, we need, also need to do the show hide uh, option. So advanced. Let's go to the responsive. Uh, for the section, right, right uh, the section holding the logo and the main menu we're going to go, go in here to advanced and then responsive i'm, I'm going to say hide on desktop hide on tablet but then show on mobile let's now go to the original header edit the section go to advanced go to responsive so uh simply hide on uh mobile and that's it so let's go ahead now update hopefully i didn't forget uh anything <laughs> let's come back in here uh, refresh the page and let's see what we have okay so original header right there and uh, okay so this is tablet view looking good and then now this is going to be the mobile view and uh, there it is that's exactly how to do the exact same thing on Elementor Pro that we did uh, with the Elementor uh, header and footer uh, plugin one final thing before I close this video uh, let's go to the back end now on the templates uh, i'm sorry uh yeah on that on that the theme builder rather not templates on a theme builder this is where you will see the new header you've created so you can click inside to edit once again and then if you want to change the name it's very very simple you come down here to the settings button and then right here we can call this one the uh, home header and we can call it uh yeah home home the, the home header basically and then we can give the other header the name of global if you want to change the conditions for displaying the header maybe you want to use the same header on a different page down here you have the save options you click in there 
Now here you will have access to the display uh, conditions option. This is where you can now go in to now maybe change to a different kind of page and so on. And uh, that is basically uh, it for creating the uh, homepage header, both on the desktop and mobile versions using Elementor Pro. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. Let me now show you how to rebuild the contact page using Elementor Pro. And specifically, we're going to be working with the Elementor uh, Pro form element. I'm going to go to the back end. And first of all, I'm going to disable the WP Forms plugin. We no longer need it. So I'm going to deactivate. And let's go back to the contact page. And obviously, we're not going to see any contact form anymore. But I'm going to go to edit with Elementor right now. And since, of course, we're using Elementor Pro, we do have the form element, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, you will find it on the Pro. You see right here, form. I'm going to, uh, let me click inside here and actually remove this block because we don't have WP forms anymore. I'm going to take in form and then just drop it underneath the contact us title. And just like with the WP Forms plugin, by default, you will have a very, very simple uh, contact form that it will have three fields of name, email, message. So right here, these are the fields. You can add another field, like you click on add item. And then right here where you have type, you will have different kinds of fields. You can add date, time. You can even add file upload. So if you want your potential subscribers or customers to attach files to send to you, you do have that field. You can also integrate Elementor with a Google Capture, and then you can use the ReCapture version 1 and version 3 in here for security. And then you also have like the Honeypot and so on. I'm not adding any additional fields, so I'll just leave these three. However, this is, of course, very subjective, but I prefer not to have the labels. I prefer just having the placeholders instead of each field indicating uh, what kind of field that is. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the label. So just have name, email, message. Now to edit the actual fields themselves, you click inside each one. So say, for example, name, I'm going to click on name. And then right here, I can change the label itself. I can change the placeholder. And of course, we're going to make it required. Okay. And then under advanced, you will have things like the ID as well as the short code, which we will make use of very, very soon. Uh, same goes with email in here. It's required. And then message, of course, I'll make the message required as well. You can make this field smaller or larger, depending on your tastes. And uh, that's it. Okay. In here, you've got the input size for the actual input for each field. You can make it small, medium, large. It's entirely up to you. You've got buttons. Do you want to make the buttons uh, medium size, large size? But that's just the uh, send button itself. You can change the text right here for the submit button itself and so on. Now, this is where things get very, very spicy. Actions after submit. So what happens once the user has clicked on send? Right here, by default, two actions have already been enabled collect submissions, which I'll show you in just a second, and then email. Because these two are active by default, you have collect submissions right here, and then you have email. Now, collect submissions, you would actually see in the back end. Let me just quickly show you. You will see in the back end, once people begin to submit the contact form, right here where you have Elementor, right, you will see submissions in here. You click on submissions, and this is where you'll begin to see uh, the person's name and so on. In fact, We'll perform an experiment very, very, very soon. But that's it for the submissions. Now, uh, email right here. So you want to receive an email that somebody has submitted a contact form on your website. So right here, you can choose the email address to receive the notification. Of course, I'm going to put my own uh, admin email right there. And then, of course, by default, you have the subject new message from and then your website's name. You can customize this, of course. And then the message will contain all fields. However, right here where you have the from email, from name, you want to use or choose the data provided by the user. Basically, the from email should be the email of 
the user. So what you want to do here is this, okay? You would go to the form fields, go to email, go to advanced, and then right here, grab the short code. So copy the short code, come back down here to email, and then right here from email, you now simply paste the uh, email ID so that you can actually see the person's uh, email. And then from name as well, do the exact same thing. Go to the name field, advanced, and then you simply grab the short code for the name field, go back to email, and then right here from name, uh, simply paste that. And then the reply to will be set to the email, of course, because you'd like to re respond to the person's email address. And that's it. You can add your CC, your blind, your blind uh, copy, and so on. You can add the metadata in here as well, such as like, you know, the page URL, the person visited, the date, time, and so on. Same as HTML or plain. This is very, very, very subjective. It'll depend on your uh, email service provider. You've also got steps settings. Let me just quickly show you what this is. If you go back to your form fields, maybe you want to create like, uh, maybe your form is actually very, very long for some reason and you want to break it down. When you're adding your item on the type, you will have step. So once you have step, now you have next. So after the step, you can then begin to add more fields again. So what happens is once they fill out the first fields in the first section, they click on next, it will take them to the next section for the form. That's basically what the uh, steps is. You can even see this is step one right here. And then you can see step two there on the right. That's what that is used for. So that's your steps uh, settings. And then you've also got the additional options like, hey, do you want to customize messages like, uh, okay, the firm was sent successfully. We'll get back to you in 24 hours, things like that. You have that option in here. But don't let me forget, going back to the actions after submit, you have many. Apart from collect submissions, email, you can have email too. You can have to, you can redirect them to a separate page. You have a webhook. And of course, if you're using uh, email management software like uh, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, you can connect them in here as well. Uh, you can connect them to Slack, Discord, or even provide a pop-up message as well. So you've got plenty of options to uh, configure or to determine what happens once the user has uh, submitted uh, the form. And uh, that is uh, basically it. Let me just go ahead and close that one. And that's, I'm going to go ahead now and simply update. And of course, let's take a look at the new page right here. Oops, my internet is misbehaving yet again. <laughs> my apologies. Okay, so that's it right now. You can see the new uh, contact form built with Elementor Pro. Uh, let me now show you an example of the uh, submissions. I'm going to pause the video and simply submit a message and then you will see the results in here. Welcome back. And as you can see right now, I've actually sent two uh, contact forms, uh, filled out two contact forms on two separate browsers, one from John James and then one from Bob Billy at yahoo.com. Now, I should have pointed, pointed this out previously. Uh, for the contact form, you can change the name right here, but you have the form name. So you can see I've just gone ahead to change mine to contact form. And I noticed this when I sent the first uh, form from John James. You can see right here, the form name was new form. That's why, it, it, and it's new form because we didn't change the name. So the second time I changed the name to contact form, submitted a new form from Bob Billy, and that's why I can now say that the form now says uh, contact form. So that's basically it. You've got the IDs, you've got the page that the form was submitted in. And of course, you can view the actual uh, message itself. So you click on the view right here and you can see the full name, the email, and then the actual message from uh, the user. And then right here, you've got the additional metadata information, when the message was sent, uh, what browser was used, uh, you know, and so on. And that's basically how the contact form with Elementor Pro works. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. Now, let me show you one of the coolest things you can do with Elementor Pro, and that is building a template for your single posts. Before I do that, let me just show you very, very quickly how you can rebuild the blog page. Remember, we used the posts element from the essential add-ons for this page. But with Elementor Pro, of course, you do have the element specifically for displaying your posts. So let me just show you very quickly how it works. You'll find it under Pro. This is it right here, posts. 
you drop it in there and of course you can choose the you know the skin number of posts show image hide image you have all those options in there you've got the query do you want to pull from posts or do you want to pull from like a manual selection or pages would you like to include by term this is where you can now add things like your categories tags and so on you've got your pagination options you've got your styling options and all that cool stuff but that is not what we're here for let me show you how to build the template for your single posts now let me pick one post right here fashion in istanbul this is what we have by default and you can see it does not look good at all that's because the hello theme is the one that's been used to display this post and it's very 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 ugly now i very specifically have made the content area for this post very very long as you can see but there's a reason for that i'm going to show you exactly uh, why i chose to do that let me first of all go ahead and build the template for our posts so let's go to elementor i'm sorry templates and then right here theme builder and we're going to add the builder for single post right here click in there no templates found want to create one yes so i'm going to click on add new right there and of course with elementor pro you will have access to a wide variety of templates you can see them right here all for single posts so many but i'm going to go ahead and close this and let's build out our template now by default since we're building the template for a single post you'll have access to these elements under the single category these are for your posts so obviously we won't display the post title so i'll drop that in there for the post title now by default elementor will pull in the latest post to use as a sample when uh, viewing the template content if you'd like to change the selection come down here to settings right here you will have the preview settings you click in there and then right here i can simply type in uh fashion in istanbul because this is the one i want to use so i'll choose fashion in istanbul click on apply and preview so now Elementor will use the content from this post for our sample. Okay, I'm going to make a few changes in here. Let's make this an H2, align to the center. Let's make the text just a little bit bigger, maybe 58 pixels or 56 pixels. That's fine. Uh, let's add some padding at the top, 25 pixels, 25 pixels at the bottom as well. All right, what's next? Featured image. Let's drop that in there make this one full and of course you can see the featured image from the post fashion in istanbul what's next you do have the post info you can drop that in there and by default it will show the author the date time comments uh i don't want to display the author i don't want to display the name i'm, I'm sorry the time so i'll remove those so just leave date and comments you can modify these two of course simply click on date as an example and say for example the icon i can just go ahead and remove the icon for that one uh, you can add extra metadata so you click on add item and then right here you can do things like add the terms like the category and so on uh custom and so on all right i'm gonna go ahead and uh close that so we only have date and comments let's go back to our elements right here next up we're gonna add will be the post our content so i'm going to drop in the post content down there just below the information let me just confirm why this seems to be grayed out i'm just okay it is displaying all right so in here we've got the post content very 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 long all right what next would you would you like to display uh we can display the post navigation so we have post navigation let's drop that in there so now we have the previous post the next post of course you can style them as much as you want and finally uh, we can add our post comments so post comments right there at the very bottom and that is it so this is going to be our template now why did i make the content area very very long i want to show you how to make use of a very 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 cool new element called the progress tracker you may have seen this on some certain blog before where you'll have like a bar uh, telling you how much of the content has been consumed or how much content you still have to read before you finish the article 
that is the progress tracker right here so what i'll do is this okay i'm going to drop it at the top right here just above the title and let me just show you how it works so right now you can see the progress bar right there moving 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 but the problem is is that once we scroll past the bar we no longer see it so what's the point of having this bar if you scroll down here and you don't even see how much of the content is left well let me show you a very very cool trick go to advanced we're editing the progress tracker by the way go to advanced go to motion effects right here where you have sticky say yes we're going to stick it at the top so what this means right now is that once we scroll you will see that the bar will always be there and you can see right now until we get to the very bottom that's when the bar uh, finishes so that's exactly how to do this it's a very 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 cool effect right so you can do that for the bottom as well which i don't think that would work because you'll actually have to scroll down at the bottom and uh, no it, it actually doesn't work i never tried it so just go with top okay go with top and of course on the style you can change the progress color you can add a border you can add a height border radius and so on for the actual progress tracker itself the progress will always be relative to the post uh, content so switch this to post content and not uh, entire page post content you got the tracker type circular or horizontal this is the circular uh, style which uh, as you can see i don't personally like that so i'll just go with horizontal you can add percentage if you want so you know it will say 25 percent 33 percent and so on you've got all those options in there for you that's it i'm gonna go ahead now hit publish and just like with the template you'll have to choose where you would like to display this particular template let's add the condition now by default it will say all singular be careful all singular refers to all single pages including your front page so it's not all singular click on the drop down arrow in here and now you'll see posts just simply choose posts that's it okay that's it that is all you need i'm gonna go ahead now click on save and close and that's it so let's go to the front page first just to confirm front page let's go to articles and let's pick uh let's say the majestic city of glasgow okay we'll have to refresh this page and there it is okay so scroll down scroll down now obviously the scroll bar moves very very quickly because the content area here is very 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 short as you can see it's just one paragraph or two paragraphs basically so maybe not the best example let's go with the uh, fashion in istanbul again i will have to refresh this page to clear the cache all right fashion in istanbul and there you go that is the template for our single post we have the title we have the featured image we have the information about the post the date it was published number of comments the content area the post navigation for the previous post and the next post and of course the comments section so that's how to build a post template for your posts using elementor pro all right so we're practically at the end of the course and before i conclude let me just give you a few more general tips and uh, advice on how to work with the paid version of Elementor. Now, you obviously have access to so much more pro elements, which we were unable to cover. But there is one which uh, I really should have added in the single post template, and that is the share buttons. You will find it just below table of contents right next to countdown and block codes. The share buttons, what this does is that it allows your users or your subscribers to basically share your articles on uh, social media. So when you drop that in there, you can choose the platforms. Maybe, maybe you want them to be able to share on Facebook, on Twitter, or even via email. You will do have that option in there. It's very, very easy to use. Be sure to check it out. Now with Elementor Pro, you also have access to things like saving templates and uh, saving widgets or elements as global. An example here is this, okay? Let's say, for example, for this entire section, right? Let me use the navigator. 
our button right here. So for this section containing the banner as well as the headline, if I wanted to reuse this section elsewhere, I could right click and then simply save as a template. I save it as a template. I can give it a name. Let's say the global uh, banner just to reuse on another page. I can save the page. All right. And it's going to be under templates in addition to the headers and footers that we created before. But now take a look at this. Okay. If I wanted to reuse this template elsewhere, let me go ahead and view this page and open up another page. So say for example, the, uh, the contact page, right? If I wanted to reuse that banner here, I would simply go to edit with Elementor and then make use of the template element, which you will find in Pro at the bottom, I believe, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's right here. Okay, so you'll see template right here. Just simply drag, drop the template in there, and now it will ask you to choose the template that you want to use. Since we called ours Global uh, Banner, now you can see Global Banner. I've added it and there you go. So now you have the uh, header right there or that, the banner right there with the headline where Travel Meets Adventure. So that's how you can reuse uh, sections over and over across your website. But we could also save single elements or even columns as global widgets. As an example, right? Let's say I wanted to reuse, uh, let's say, this particular uh, call to action right here, right? This uh, deals and packages, right? I'm going to click inside. And I could right click on the deals and packages uh, element itself. And then right here, you will see save as a global. Click on save as a global. And I can call this one the uh, call to action uh, widget, just as an example, right? I can save that. And now the thing is, if I was to go to another page again, let's say the contact page one more time. And I wanted to reuse that exact same element. All I need to do is to go to global right here. And now you can see that the call to action widget is now available. I can simply click drag and then just drop it anywhere I want to uh, drop it into. So just uh, a small little difference. Sections, you can save them as templates and reuse, but the actual elements themselves, you can use those, uh, as, you can save them as global widgets and we use them across uh, your website as much as you want. So these are other additional features available for you with Elementor Pro. But again, you have access to so many other very interesting elements, slides, gallery, even the login element. So if you want to customize your login page with Elementor Pro, you do have the element for that animated headline, a price list. Now, just to conclude, I do have a bunch of tutorials on how to work with Elementor Pro on my YouTube channel. I do have my course, which of course I've already mentioned, but Elementor themselves have uh, an academy. They do have lots of tutorials on how to work with the different widgets and elements and features provided by Elementor Pro. You would simply go to uh, elementor.com slash academy. And right here, just simply pick on any topic that you'd like to learn about regarding Elementor Pro and uh, you have everything available for you in here. So there's tons and tons of resources available for you <clears throat> to really maximize and get the most out of working with uh, Elementor Pro. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. So there it is, guys. We've come to the end of this mega tutorial on how to use both the free versions and paid versions of Elementor to build a fully functional website. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, questions, thoughts, please put them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer as many of them as I possibly can. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share the video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. And of course, be sure to check out my other Elementor tutorials here on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. And of course, if you're interested in my course, I have the link in the box below. And of course, if you'd like to buy the paid version of Elementor, just a gentle reminder, the last reminder, I'll have my affiliate link in the box below as well. Thank you so much. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.